What is up, y'all? Kevin Kuhn here from Athlete Factors. This is the Athlete Factors podcast. My guest today is Luke Scribner. What's up, man? Hey, how's it going, man? Doing real well. Doing real well. Thanks for joining me again. You were yep. one of my one of my first few uh, podcast guests when I got this started back, you know, shoot, over a year ago. Yeah, um, one of so, the first ones. <laughs> yeah. So we got to talk a little bit about um, what you were doing at the time, coaching collegiately, I believe. And, mm-hmm. uh, so you've kind of switched gears. Now you're back yep. to coaching high school there yep. at Reedy. Yep. yep. As you can see right here. <laughs> nice. Yep. In, uh, Frisco. Yep. One of their, so. one of the 13 schools they have there now, which is crazy, man. Wow. Yeah, that is crazy. So, um, you're here today to, uh, talk a little bit about, um, a little piece of writing that you've put together to yep. still still uh, working on the title, but you know, we, we've got that, the meat and the potatoes of it all. So it's uh hopefully we can start getting out to people pretty soon after this. Awesome. So yeah, the whole point of that is to, to kind of put together a, a bit of a how to for high school distance coaches, just mm-hmm. like, I know of so many high school coaches who just aren't really sure of what to do except, hey, go run. Yeah, like, exactly. Right? So how do you put together a legitimate training program? How do you put together uh, a full season, like preseason, early season, midseason, end of season, postseason? Like yep. how do you do all that? Yep. Um, so you've kind of done all that and kind of laid everything out, which is great. Mm -hmm. So in between kind of like the college and the high school standpoint, I went into private coaching. So I coached um, a lot of great athletes. I coached uh, Martin Chavez, the 6A runner up in cross country. Um, And he also ran, what do you mean, 415 in the mile, 904 in the full two mile uh, at a championship race with some of the top kids in the nation out in South Carolina. Uh, You know, he ran 1440. He ran really, really well. Um, So and then I also have some, you know, I had a girl that was a 540 miler, you know, so, so it's everything in between, you know. Um, and I kind of saw these coaches, you know, working with the Duncanville coach, me and him worked really, really close together to help Martin kind of achieve, you know, his, uh, the things that he got to achieve. And, you know, he was one of the mm-hmm. top kids coming in, had, a, had something bad happen. He got his heel clicked with about 300 meters to go at the state championships. Mm-hmm. And uh, Luke Lambert took, took, uh, took a hold of it and went after him. But you know, with saying that I, I've worked with all these coaches and I've had coaches that I can call the, on the phone and be like, hey, coach, this is what I think we should do this to, for this athlete. And then there's other coaches that are like, nope, my way or the highway. And then some of the most of the time, those people don't really know what they're doing most often, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, and me as a, as a coach, I worked when I first started coaching, I worked with Coach Schwartz, Tom Schwartz. Um, he used to coach the 10 man elite team and now he just coaches a bunch of uh um, you know, private coach kids and all that kind of stuff from Texas to New York. Um, mm-hmm. He has a lot of great athletes as well. And he taught me that even though I knew a lot about training and running, and you can always learn more from somebody, you know, mm-hmm. and so that's that's kind of one of the key points we'll get into here in a minute. Uh, but the reason I did this is for those coaches who maybe not don't know, uh, you know, hey, I'm a basketball coach that so I got thrown into coaching cross country and track so what the heck am i supposed to do versus just Mm -hmm. go in all right well i guess i'll just run three miles a day um and then we'll see you at the meets and have fun you know and then they don't really have that much success or the kids that do have that success they're here when they could be up here you know or wherever else so Mm -hmm. um you know this this you know document is is kind of just to get it out to those coaches or even the coaches that do know a little bit and just help them maybe learn a little bit more uh, and just mm-hmm. realize like, oh, hey, like, I like that. I could take that and add it to my program and it makes my kids better, you mm-hmm. know, because I, you know, I talk with you. I talk with all kinds of coaches all across the place. You know, I have three buddies that coach to the college level and they're calling me and I'm calling them. And we're just going back and forth all the time, learning and learning and learning and taking some bits and pieces to make, you know, I call it the smorgasbord, you know, or the pizza you have pizza with all kinds of different toppings on it, but it's still it's pizza <laughs> at the end of the day, you know? So, mm-hmm. um, you know, that's, that's kind of what it's for in the background of it, you know, before we kind of dive into it too deep if, you know, that's who it's for. And, and you can always learn more, um, and, and really, you know, grow yourself along with, you know, growing your athletes as well. Cause if you don't grow as a coach, then your athletes are going to become stagnant over time, you know? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I think, uh, you know, like I've, I've got it right here. We're looking at about 11 pages yep. right now, single space. So um, obviously there's going to be some, some formatting stuff that you'll do. You'll probably, you know, make yeah. it look real pretty. Yeah. But as far as like the content goes, like this is very, very easy to digest. Yep. It's like you can sit down and do it all like you can read it all in one sitting mm -hmm. like this is not a 300 page uh you know love letter to yeah. to aerobics right yeah. like this isn't exactly. jack daniel's running formula where you're yeah. you've got like it's gonna take you a long time to get through this yeah i wanted to make it kind of an in-between because i mean i've read 15 different books i mean if you've ever seen lore of running it's 300 mm -hmm. something pages of, of just all kinds of stuff so it takes you forever and then i don't want it to be like where you search online a 5k program and it's one sheet of paper and has just workouts on it so yeah. this is kind of the in between you know because if people want to re research more then they can research and dive deeper into what i'm talking about but if mm -hmm. it's the regular person that just like hey i'm here i'm getting my paycheck and i want my kids to be good too then they can mm -hmm. you know they can digest it and write their own notes and then go, okay, well, here, it's laid out for me right here where I can do this. And it gives the reasoning behind it. Perfect. All yeah. right, so without further ado, let's yeah. let's dive in. So, yeah. so you've laid out kind of some keys to creating a successful environment. Like that's yeah. kind of that. Like you gotta, you've got to be in a place where things are functioning, like things sure. work well. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so the first the first key is being present. So tell us exactly what you mean by that. Yeah. So, I mean, but kind of before we say that, like at the, in the introduction, it's, I talk about, there's not a special magic pill. So mm -hmm. through all of these things, I just want like all the coaches or athletes to, to understand that there's like, as we talk about these things, it, it's not like, Oh, Hey, what works for me will work for you too. You may be in a different, you know, socioeconomic area or have different athletes or, you're in altitude or whatever the case may be. So your training program may be a little bit different or their, your coach may, you know, it, it, a, lot, a lot of kids in the Frisco and area and, uh, you know, Dallas area do um, Pavo. And a lot of people think, mm -hmm. oh, Pavo is the nightmare. It's tough. It's hard. It's hard to do. Um, mm -hmm. But I've seen people be really, really successful at it. So, you know, taking that with a grain of salt and just knowing that there's not one special magic pill that's going to make everything be faster or everything be better or whatever the case is. It's just the consistency of, you know, really, really working hard over time, you know, but we're yeah. saying that like being present, it's, it's more than just showing up every day, right? Cause there's a lot of coaches that show up. All right, y'all go run. I'm gonna go sit in my truck or I'm going to go get ready for the basketball game or whatever the case is. Right. So, mm -hmm. you know, being present, you want to be actively engaged. You're talking to, you know, your kids, seeing how they're feeling. Cause that's a big thing with Reedy. You know, when I got hired on the, the, the principal was like, Hey, we care more about the way that you treat kids and the way you are with kids than the way that you coach, you know? So, um, mm -hmm. you know, if you create that relationship with them and you're there and you're actively engaged and working hard and then the kids are going to buy into you as well. And knowing that like, Hey, I'm not just here to get a paycheck and my coach doesn't care about me. If I get hurt or I get injured, then, you know, if you, if you're there and being present, then the kids are going to give a lot more to you as well. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. One of, one of the things uh, I just thought of when, when you were mentioning some of this stuff, especially about there not being a, there's no magic pill. Um, I just started reading uh, the book that I actually was texting with you about. Um, yeah. Consistency is the key by yep. uh, Jay Johnson. I, I think says, I say that in there. <laughs> yeah, you do. I, yeah. I underline that. Like consistency yeah. is the key. Like, yeah. um, he says there's ten thousand ways to train correctly. Like, yeah. there's no one way that that you have to do it. Like, mm -hmm. there's there's specific concepts and pillars that like are are going to be true across the board right yeah. like you you have to accumulate running volume you have to run in order to get better at running like exactly. there's specific things you have to do you can't train into the ground you have to be able to incorporate recovery and and, and there's all these things right nutrition is key yeah. and, and strength training is important all these things are important but one of the things he says is like there's different ways to achieve all these things and you don't have to 
follow a set plan that someone else has, you know, says this is the way. Like, nah, it doesn't really work like that. So um, I think, yeah, I think that is super important for people to understand. It changes with age, too. You know, as, as we know now, the older we're getting, we're not in our college prime anymore. You know, we'd love to be. We can mm-hmm. run 100 miles a week, do multiple workouts, go race, then go do a 20-mile <laughs> run later. You know, now I'm like, oh, man, I'm tired. I got this stuff. You know, your body takes longer to recover. So mm-hmm. being a 14-year-old kid, your body may recover super fast versus a 30-year-old, you know. And this program just isn't for just high school kids either. You know, it could be from a junior high kid all the way to a professional elite level kid or mm-hmm. a master's runner, whatever the case. I have people that, you know, a guy that ran a one eighteen half and he's 45 years old, you wow. know, and, mm-hmm. he just, and he just followed the plan. And he's like, at first he was like, man, I don't know. I don't know. And then he, now I've been training for three years and he's like, I'll, I'll get there. It's just a matter of time now. You know, I just got to buy into yep. it. I'm like, exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. You know? So He's like, I know what's gonna take, and I, it'll, I'll get there. So, but yeah, man, that's <laughs> that's it's the thing, it's consistency. So, yeah. So one of the, in this section, here's one of the things that that stood out to me that I underlined. So, I'll just read this, and then I'll get kind of your thoughts on it. So, sure. now during your time as a coach, you'll have athletes and other coaches that show up with negative attitudes and or just complaining about having to be there. There are a couple of ways you can deal with this. One, remind the athlete and the coach what the goal is at hand and why they're doing what they're doing. Number two, ask the athlete or coach to leave practice. This is something that I've done before due to the fact that being at practice and being part of that team is a choice. It's not forced. Most of the time, after going over these two options, your team starts to understand that they're sacrificing for each other and working towards a common goal. The second way I show up every – well, let's talk about that first. Yeah, yeah. So let's go into that. Why is that important to be like, hey, you don't need to be here? (laughs) Yeah, for sure. So it's team atmosphere, okay? So like everywhere that I've gone, uh, I mean, besides Melissa, I feel like when I was at Melissa, the boys like, they they knew what they wanted. And if you weren't there to like be a part of the team, then they're like, hey, you need to leave. Or they just run you off, you know? Mm -hmm. But everywhere else, it's been kind of the mindset of, because it's been rebuilding. When I went to Commerce, it was a rebuild. Here at Reedy, it's kind of, it's kind of a rebuild mentally. Um, mm-hmm. All those kids were just tired and worn out. But um, so at the beginning of the year, I have like, hey, we have our goals. We have, you know, this is our goal. What do you want to do? I, write, I let every kid write it down what they want to do. And most of the time, oh, we want to win a conference championship. We want to go to state. We want to do these things. So I have, I'm like, hey, this is what you want to do. Um, so whenever you have everybody on the same common goal, it's easy to get up every day and to go do those things. Mm-hmm. Right. So the reason that I like to squash it early and say like, hey, like, you know what you're here for. And if you don't want to be here, then you, you can leave. Like mm-hmm. I've, I've done it already this year. It, and it's, I'm not being rude. I'm not being mean. But yeah. like if they don't want to work hard the same way everybody else is, then we will. I'll find I'd rather I said this the other day to one of the kids. I would rather give all of my effort. I, I lost you there for a second. Okay. Can you. Yeah. So. Yeah. Rewind. So, 15 be, seconds. Hit it. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I, like I said, I've if, said if this, they don't want to show up. Yeah. If they don't want to show up, then that's that's their choice. I, I'm not cross country isn't a mandatory sport. It's yeah. they don't have to be there. I, I'm not going to get mad if they leave, you know. And mm-hmm. so I, I tell kids all the time that I would much rather give all of my effort to somebody that's going to give all the effort to me than somebody that's going to give half their effort when I'm giving them everything that I have. So. Mm-hmm. Because when it's like negativity is like a like a disease, you know, I guess right now with COVID, you understand people understand that more often. Um, Mm -hmm. So like once one person gets it and you're around a group all the time, then that person's probably going to get it, too. And the next person. So if you have negativity Mm -hmm. start creeping around, it's better just to quarantine that person, you know, and just say, hey, you you need to take a break. Like, hey, you can come back tomorrow and figure it out. And that person Mm -hmm. goes, oh, crap. Like, you know, I'm. I, I may be the top guy, but I'm not bigger than the coach doesn't think I'm bigger than the team, you know? Mm-hmm. And then, so everybody else in the team understands that like, Hey, I'm here for the name across the chest versus, uh, you know, doing that kind of thing. So it, it's just yeah. team morale more than anything. And knowing that like when they step on the line, that these people have my back and the coach has my back, 
you know, and they don't want it to, they, they, it's all positive. Cause when you step on the line, you know, as a distance runner, you have negativity always creeping in. You can stop, mm-hmm. you can slow down. You don't have to go that fast. You're hurting, mm-hmm. you know, and when you get on the, on the line, then you go, Oh crap. Like if you have that negativity, you swirl in your head versus like, Hey, it's tough. Like I told, I had a girl get mad at me the other day at practice. We were doing one and ones to start off. And she was going and she was like, coach, I don't feel good. I said, do you want to stop or do you want to keep going? And she was just like, Ugh. and she, you know, she finished the workout and, <laughs> and run hard. Yeah. And she was just like, and then the other, like one of the girls the other day, she was like, I'm tired. And she looked over at the girl and she goes, do you want to go home or do you want to run? <laughs> you know? And then she was like, I got you coach. You know? And I was uh-huh. just like, good. That's, that's how it's supposed to be, you know? Yeah. And so having that team around, like, Hey, yeah, this sucks. We're out here and doing it all together. Embracing the suck is what I call it. Um, you know, yep. together because it's not always fun. Distance running is not always fun. And coaching, getting up early is not always fun either. You know, getting up at five o'clock in the morning to go coach some kids is not always fun either. So that's that's why I, I harp on that a lot of, of, of like squashing the bug when it's there because you don't want it to spread to your entire team and then you end up with a whole team of negative people who don't want to be there who are giving you half their effort and all that stuff. Yeah, no, I think I think that that's so important. Like you've got to, it's so hard to be good at, at endurance sports. It's hard to be good at running. Like the more negativity you bring to that, the harder it's going to be like, yeah, for sure. You got to bring some levity and it's like, yeah, you, you understand like this sucks for everybody. Like you got to do it. Yeah. Just do it. And the thing, the thing I tell the kids is, you know, all the time is, Hey, it's going to suck now, but all those people that are sitting on the couch and not working out when you're kicking their butt, like you're going to go, Oh, that's why I did it. That's why I did it. You know? So Mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. I think the way you kind of finished that section, uh, when you said, uh, when you fill a team with positive energy and positive reinforcement and getting up at 6am isn't something that we have to do, it turns into what we get to do. And I think when the coach understands that and can convey that to the athletes, like, they get it. They'll understand it. Like, oh, like this is, this is a privilege. This isn't something that I have to do. Like, n- not everybody's doing this. Exactly. Like, you get to do this. This is exciting. Yeah. This is fun. Yeah, because so, there's a lot of coaches that don't even show up during the summertime, and they say mm-hmm. August 10th, hey y'all, come on, let's start cross country. And then the kids yep. are dying all year long, you know. Yeah. Versus my oh, yeah. my kids are, and I know the other Frisco schools too, because we've been seeing them running every day. Yeah, you know? mm-hmm. and they, I'm just like, hey, that's that they're training to beat you. Like if you don't show up, that's who's going to beat you. You know, and they're like, oh, crap, well, I'm going to show up, you know, and that kind of stuff. So it, it's, yeah. it's good our, stuff. our homeschool group, we meet at Oak Point every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday during the summer. And okay. like the kids, the kids who are showing up, like they're going to be ready to go. And the yeah. kids who haven't been showing up, it's going to hurt. Come yeah. <laughs> like they're, they're going to be like, this is awful. I'm like, well, yeah. It was awful when we started it. Now it feels fine. Yeah. Like this is normal. So yeah. yeah. So that takes us into the next sec- next section, which is knowing the why. So yeah. tell us a little bit about why knowing the why is important. Yeah. So I think this is probably one of the biggest keys as a coach. Um, not as necessarily like having your credibility or anything like that, um, but it's for you to have the research and to know like what's going on. Uh, you know, I, I expand on a little bit more, but I, the, the thing that when I look at it, I'm like, when a kid shows up to practice and they're like, why am I doing this? Why am I here? Why am I running? Why am I getting up early? Why am I hurting today? And I go, Hey, th- because if you do it now, you're going to be better off in August and September and October, or, mm-hmm. Hey, we're working towards this goal. And when I show them, I can break down like, Hey, we're in this phase. So today we're doing this workout because of this and they go oh okay well that makes sense you know Mm -hmm. and once the kids understand the why then they're more likely to buy in Mm -hmm. you know um and it's never a bad thing for the kids to understand just as much as the coach does like my goal by the end of it is to have the kids where they go oh we should be doing this at this pace you know i tell them every day we sit there like so we're on uh with tomorrow wednesday we will be doing um, one case and 800s. The girls are doing 800s. The guys are doing one case. And I'm telling them, hey, we're going to be doing them at CV pace or like your 10K race pace. 
And they're like, why, why, why are we doing it at that pace? I'm like, okay, well, that's part of your aerobic development. Like, that's how we're going to do it. Like, you know, and just letting them understand it. And they're like, oh, okay, cool. And it starts to click. And then for them, it's just, ah, right, that's what we're supposed to do, you know? Mm -hmm. So it helps them understand the training that they're doing and why they're doing it. And then when I tell them what we're doing, they, they buy into it. So it's all about mm -hmm. getting kids to buy into the program more than anything. Um, and letting them understand that like, Hey, this is what we're doing while we're doing it. And then as a coach, it gives you along with the credibility, just the respect of the kids for you, because they knew that you took the time to plan out everything and to know mm -hmm. like, Hey, this is what's going on. And they go, and it, it just, it just, it comes full circle and really surrounds everything and, and lets the kids know like what's going on. Yeah. It's not, it's not like you say, it's not, uh, because I said so yeah. it's, well, here's why, like, I like when my athletes, my adult athletes that I'm, that I'm, you know, training here or the youth athletes I'm training here or the kids, you know, that I'm coaching, like, I want you to ask me why, Yeah. because if I don't have an answer, then, you know, I'm kind of just making stuff up and like, that's not good. Like if yeah. I just no, like I should have a good reason mm -hmm. for everything that we're doing. It's like, hey, yeah. coach, why are why are we doing this? Oh, well, this is this is why. Yeah. And this will lead to this, which will mm -hmm. have this outcome. And like, oh, okay, that makes perfect sense. I'm gonna do it. Yeah, it's having that learning environment. I mean, when you're, I, I call it the dictator coach, where you say, mm -hmm. this is what we're doing. This is why we're doing it. You're gonna do it. And then the kids are like this is hard. I don't want to do this, you know, mm -hmm. versus if I, you know, I let them know like, Hey, this is what we're doing. Um, do y'all have any questions? Do you know, want to know anything more? Or I'm like explaining mm -hmm. it to them. Hey, this is why we're doing this today. We're in the base phase right now. So we're working on getting our volume up. Um, instead of the intensity we're, we want to get the volume up to where we want to go. And then we bring the intensity up so we don't get injured. And then that just clicks in their head because, Oh, well I had this injury last year. I had this injury last year you know, that, all that kind of stuff. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it helps them click and go, all right, well, I don't want to get injured. So this is what I have to do or I need to do, you know? So mm -hmm. that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Man. So the next one, which is really, really tough for high school athletes to understand, especially if they're doing multiple sports, yep. uh, that are outside of running. Um, but it's be a year round runner. So yeah. what does that mean? Yeah, so I feel like knowing the why is the most important one for the coach, and being a year-round runner is the most important for the actual runner. Uh, mm -hmm. Because if you, the time that you don't spend running uh, or doing something aerobically developing, right, your body is essentially going backwards. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, after 21 days, you start losing your aerobic capacity, right? I, some uh, 14 days and 21 I, think, or, I don't know the actual percentage yeah, there's some controversies some types of training like mm. can like you can begin detraining certain aspects within like 48 to 72 hours yeah so like which is weird because it's like okay well what if you need to take multiple days off for recovery like what happens there but for the most part like i'd say within a week or two of cessation of training, like yeah. you're already on yeah. the way down for sure. Yeah. So I mean, would you have, like you say if people, we're talking about a week or two. If people mm -hmm. go, all right, I'm running cross country and then in November is my last meet and I'm not going to run again till February or March. Mm -hmm. That's two or three months, like four months. Mm -hmm. Like that's a long time and your body's doing nothing. Or if you're playing basketball or different things like that, like you're getting a little bit of training. So you're kind of maintaining a little bit, but for a kid that trains, and even if, like, when I tell my kids a lot, during the summertime and the wintertime, you don't have to do a lot. You just have to do something. Mm -hmm. I, I had a college girl that I had, and she did not want to run during the summertime. Coach, I hate running in the summertime. I can't deal with the heat. I hate it. I live in Houston. I, I was like, all right, run 20 minutes a day. That's it. Just run 20 minutes a day. And then she mm -hmm. comes in and runs, like, a three-minute PR in the, in the 6K. You know, just because she did a little bit, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the big thing. And if the, the more you train, your body gets adapted, right, to the training stimulus, to running, to the efficiency, different things like that. To and the then, environment. Exactly. To the, heat, to the exactly. humidity. Yeah. Versus if you sit inside for two and a half months 
and then you go, oh, cross country <laughs> starts August 10th, and I've just been going out to get in the pool, that's it, then you're going to be dragging butt, you know, and being way behind. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and it just, it helps with the consistency as well, you know. Like we, like we said before, consistency is key. The more you're training, the more you're doing, the more your body's, you know, able to do it and recalling those workouts. For sure. You, yeah, like you only have so much time during the season to make improvements. Like the the way that I kind of describe things to to my high school athletes and the reason that we put together this summer running program um, was because I was like, hey, like the season, that's – that's when you like sharpen the blade. That's yep. when you get sharp. That's when you you fine tune everything during the season. Mm. You like beat that metal into a blade in the off season. Yep. But like you don't have time to do both once the season has started. Like yep. you're either metal that can be sharpened or you're just a hunk of metal and maybe yep. you'll be able to yep. find something useful out of, you know, out of that at yeah, some exactly. point during the season. But like yeah. like the real work happens in the off season, the fine tuning happens during the season. And so uh we make it a point like if you show up to practice the first day and you haven't been running and you can't, you know, run a full 5k like the first day, maybe you shouldn't run cross country. Like yeah. maybe you should think about doing another sport cuz like we want this to be serious. It doesn't matter yeah. how long it takes you, but if you can't complete a full 5k day 1 of practice. Mm-hmm. And that's a fairly low barrier to entry. Like yeah. I want I want everybody showing up having done like we kind of we have a tier system. So with like our entry level athletes like if you've never run before or if it's your first or second year, like we had we had a goal set at about 100 100 to 125 miles for the summer over yeah, 10 weeks. Yeah, which is not much. It's not much. Like our our second level, which is, you know, if you've run, you know, maybe two seasons, like 225, 200 to 225 miles. Yeah. And then if you're advanced and like you've been in the program for 3 years or so or you've been in since middle school and now it's your senior year, you, so this is, you know, your essentially your sixth year or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, like we had up to about 325 miles, um, in 10 weeks, that's 32 and a half miles a week. That's, that's not crazy. Yeah. But four or five miles a day. Exactly. But the consistency part, like you can't go from 15 miles a week to then, Mm -hmm. Oh, season's going to start next week. I'm gonna run 35 miles this week. Like, Mm, that's probably not a good idea like yeah slowly building up and so yeah cons- like you said man consistency is key and the one thing that i like to say is 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 it's i use the analogy of like building a home so mm. if i build a home and have a good foundation which is the summertime right at the winter time or whatever the case is i build a good foundation you know where we put the concrete down all that kind of stuff then it's going to be a lot more sturdy when you start putting the walls and the roof and all Mm -hmm. that stuff in there, you know, versus if you come in and you just try to put a wooden house up with no base, then that thing is going to fall over easily. So, Mm -hmm. you know, that's when your injuries occur and different things like that. When you start trying to put a roof on a heavy roof on, you know, really, really, really weak ground, you're going to collapse. So that's what I try to tell my kids is you want to create a good, good foundation that we can build off of. You know, kind of the mm-hmm. same thing with with your iron. You know, you have you have your sword, your, but you have to slowly but surely you have to build it. If not, mm-hmm. if you haven't forged it in the fire, then you're you're just gonna you know be a dull blade, and that's not gonna be yep. any fun. So it's not useful. Yeah, you can't nope. can't do anything with that. So, all right, next one. Never stop learning. So this yep. is a tough one, especially yep. for high school coaches who like it's like. Eh, yeah, I'll coach, and then once the season's over, oh, thank goodness, now I now I can have my life back. Yeah. Um, which is unfortunate that that's the case for some high school coaches, but yeah. uh, the sport itself is so much more fun when you as a coach, like, are enjoying it. And I feel like you enjoy it if you understand, like, I don't know everything. I need to learn more so that I can get better. And if I'm better and I can write programs better and if I can read my athletes better and I can communicate better, like Mm -hmm. it's going to be a better season. 
So with the never stop learning, uh, I actually left like a a key point out that I I just my, one of my buddies said, hey, you shouldn't insert that. So I, I definitely want to talk about it. Um, but some of the best coaches that I know, we're always talking. Uh, Coach Matt Appleman, um, he was at Marietta, Oklahoma. He came to the cross country camp a couple of times. You might know him. Yep. And um, mm-hmm. they had like 200 kids in the school and he had like 75 kids in the cross country team. Um, wow. You know, so but he also had nine state championships in six years. Wow. So, I mean, most he's won more state championships than most people I know. And he would call me and ask me to look over his workouts. I'm like, dude, you got more state championships than me. Why are you asking me? You know, but and, and, and the same thing with Co- there's Coach Parks from uh, Decatur. He's won multiple state championships, been successful year after year after year. Uh, mm-hmm. Coach Stone from Kaufman, like uh, even, you know, uh, I mean, there's coaches all over the place that I talk to all the time. And even with my buddies at the college level, hey, man. Will you look over this for me? Will you, what do you think about this? What do you, what are y'all doing this year? What do you, you know, what's your workout plans look like? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we're always bouncing ideas and learning from each other. And those are the best coaches that I know around that mm-hmm. are, hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? What are y'all doing this year? What do, how are you transitioning in a year of COVID? What do you, like, you, the, you know, whatever mm-hmm. the case is. So it's, it's when you see those other ideas from these coaches, you aren't getting stagnant. I know, I know in the, in the document, I talked about being stagnant and just going like, Hey, I've been doing this for 30 years. This is what I've done. And it's going to keep working. Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe that's the case. But nowadays kids are so much different than they were than when we were in high school. Mm-hmm. And, you know, even when I coached the kids, when I was at Melissa, they, you know, they can handle more volume. They can handle higher intensity just because of the food that they're eating the, the training that they're getting at a younger age. Like I've got kids that coach, I've been running since I was six years old. Judson Greer kid just graduated from Melissa high school. He was on our happy feet team when he was five years old. Wow. You know, he was at seventh or seventh grade. He ran 455, 457, you know, his eighth grade year ran 440 something, 430 something, you know, I'm like, mm-hmm. but so when he got to high school, I'm like, Hey, we can add more miles. We can do these things because you're ready to do it. Mm-hmm. Versus if a coach is like, oh, no, this is what I always do with my freshman kids, then mm-hmm. you're getting left behind. So that, yeah. that's why I do say the never stop learning is just is really understanding, hey, what's going on? Look at the surroundings around you and look what other people that are being successful are doing. Like mm-hmm. if I had the best, if, if I could talk to Alberto Salazar, even though, you know, all the stipulations and all that, or Jerry Schumacher, or I mean, even Coach Schwartz, I get to talk to him on a daily basis and one of the best coaches that I know. Um, mm-hmm. you know, if I could pick up the phone and talk to them and just see what they do and how they do it, then heck, dude, that's, that's gold to me, you know, because I want to, yeah. I want to see how I can get better. And so when we talk and you say, oh, well, we did this workout. This is how we do our heels versus this. Then, all right, I'm going to take that and write that down. I'm going to add that to my pizza. You know, I'm going to add that to mm-hmm. my smorgasbord of stuff and, and figure out how to be successful. And it just, that's how you want to be as a coach. You want to be a sponge. You want to take everything in, take everything, take it, take everything in and mm-hmm. just really focus on making yourself the best so you can make these kids the best. Yeah, I think uh, the idea that that people don't want to talk to other coaches is like, well, well, like I've got my secret workout and <laughs> I don't want to shit. I don't want people to know like but like we were talking about earlier, there's no magic pill. There's no special workouts like the the secret part is being able to do this consistently over time that's where that's where the changes occur like yep. repeat exposure to the same type of stress your body adapts okay now you can change that workout make it a little bit harder repeat mm-hmm. exposure the body adapts again repeat yep. exposure the body adapts again you're making these incremental gains there's no like, oh, well, you've got to do this one workout. You do a K and then you take this much time and only this much time for rest. And then you do an 800 and then you yeah. do this much rest. But then you're going to do a mile and you're going to do an uphill, but yeah. you're going to do it with your eyes closed. And like, and there's the nothing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. you're going to put water in your mouth and you're not going to swallow it. And then you're going to run, like, you got to breathe through your nose the whole time. Yeah. Like, well, these are, yeah. no. 
might might have been just, might have been the way you did it in a long time ago, but it doesn't. It's not how it works now. And it's <laughs> and it's funny you said that that like other coaches are scared of they don't want to they don't give information out, you know. And it's it's hilarious because like I'll send people my workouts, like I mean the Roy City coach, like me and him, I I actually almost took a job at Roy City. You know, I, I love that coach to death. Um, he, great guy, Coach Snow. Like me and him bounce ideas off of him. Like we we talked back and forth. Even though now I took the job at Reedy, like I was like, hey, this is what we're doing. I sent him this document. I sent him my workout plan from the time summertime to a peak. You know, mm-hmm. and he's in our same region, same region and everything. You know, when mm-hmm. I was at Melissa, I sent the all, my workouts to the coach, a coach in our district. You know, I was like, you can do what you want with it. This is what we're doing. You know, if you yeah. got the if you got the talent and the kids and the time to do it, then go do it. But that workout isn't going to make your kids faster. Mm-hmm. It's doing them at the right levels, the right intensities, and and following through with the success you know and having those kids that have that internal motivation and, and getting them to be there you know because mm-hmm. I, I we had a kid uh told our coach of the day he goes coach I, i've got one day a week where i can i can go past comfortable you know as he said i'm like okay well at least he's honest mm-hmm. all right so let's focus on <laughs> one of the hard days one of the hard days we're going to go past comfortable. Like one of our workout days, we're going to go past comfortable. The other days, you just be comfortable. Stay comfortable. Be yeah. comfortable, big man. You know, mm-hmm. and he's already starting <laughs> to see success. It's funny, you know, that people say that because that's you have to be comfortable being uncomfortable is what I say. You know, or yeah. uh, work hard when it's hard to work is another one that I like to say too. But you know, it's just going back and just being like, hey, I'm not afraid of what other coaches can do. If they beat me, if I if I give a coach workouts. And their kids beat me, my team or whatever the case is. Good job. Mm-hmm. I give you a clap, pat on the back. Y'all, y'all did a great job. You know, but if mm-hmm. if they don't, then I'm gonna go. Hey, y'all got a lot better. So did we. So let's let's have good competition, friendly competition. See what see who's the best. Yep. You know. So there's no. It, it's I think it's ego over anything, and I think that's mm-hmm. one thing you have to check at the door being a being a coach, and because there's let like me said. LeBron James will post everything that he does, so might as well post everything that we do, you know? That's the thing. Like, you, if you give everything to, like, another coach, and then they're like, oh, finally, I know exactly what to do, and they use it. And then you're like, hey, y'all did a great job. What'd you do? Like, well, I just followed your plan. You're yeah. like, oh, great. Well, uh, you're not going to know what I'm doing next year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to be yeah. using this old stuff. Meanwhile yeah. – I've already learned new stuff. Yep. I've already adapted. I found a gap in this program that worked really well, and I filled that gap. And you're yep. gonna, it's gonna show up next year. Like, but they're not gonna understand that if it's just a template to them. Like, yep. it's not, it's not a process. Exactly. So. And every, and every day is a little bit different. Like, I'll have, like, so say if uh, tomorrow we're doing 800s in one case, then I'll go, uh, we'll get out there, and hey, I may adapt it. Like, hey, we're looking like crap today. Hey, let's cut it to 600s. You know, and that's just being on the fly, you know, like, hey, this is what we're doing. This this is what we want to get out of it. So, uh, you know, when you're when you're learning, you have to learn in yourself of knowing like, hey, we may have to change something up. And that's OK. It's not against the rules to do a different workout or to, to you know, minor change of something like that, you know, so. Mm-hmm. That's that's good stuff. So next section section number two which is creating a proper training program so this i found very interesting just because uh most of the books that i've read on like how to program uh uh, an endurance training program don't start with like necessarily the end goal in mind and this is i thought this was really interesting because you're planning things out what you call from the peak starting from the peak and working backwards but uh, you're looking at it from like the time period of the peak, not necessarily yep. your goal yep. race pace. So, mm-hmm. which is something I'll, I'll want to pick <coughs> in a little bit about uh, once we get there. But so, tell us what what that means. What does it mean to start yeah. from the peak and work backwards? Yeah. So, um, your peak is, is is a range of time it, doing the style of training that I do that you sh- you should be able to run your fastest of the season. Right. So all we put everything together. We put the foundation, we put the walls up, we put the and we're now we're just putting in the fancy furniture. Right. That's the peak for me. Um, 
so so the peak is two to three weeks long usually is what I like to do it um, and it's where we start just really um, you know bringing the mileage down um, the intensity is kind of going up all those good things there and it's where our big meets are so if we think about it if it say if I'm, I'm in a really really tough region I'm in the region of death, what I call it, region two, 5A. It's one of the fastest regions. Most every year, every team that gets out usually finishes in the top at, at the state meet, too. Um, so, I mean, we have Lovejoy, Highland Park, Roy City, us, all the Frisco schools. Like, it, you know, it, it, it's tough. It's really tough. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> maybe my peak for my team is at the regional championships because mm-hmm. that's when we want to get to the state championships. So I'm going to I'm going to go okay hey when I'm starting and I'm brainstorming at the beginning of the year before we start um, you know cross country training in the fall I'm going to go all right this is where we're starting like this is where we want to be in the end so from there I'm just going to go start working backwards to know where we need to start so by the time that we work through everything else through our base phase our strength phase specific then when we get to that peak phase like our bodies are ready to go um, mm-hmm. For the kids that followed through the whole program, went through it all, um, you know, it, it gets them there and ready to go during that time. So the reason I start with the peak phase is because it gives us a destination mm-hmm. versus just going, okay, we're going to start June 1st and then June 1st, I'm going to do six weeks and then three weeks of this. And then by, when I get to the peak, I'm like, uh oh, we got three more weeks we need to worry about, you know, so I'd rather work backwards and go, okay, well, I know the peak phase is about two to three weeks long. Like you're not going to be able to maintain a high, high level of intensity training for much more than that, especially after a long season. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if it's, if it's regionals and then state and then NXN, that's about three ish weeks that you can kind of maintain and push through that. Right. So, Mm -hmm. um, or if it's, Hey, we want to get a district. I've got a coach, um, really good friend of mine. He coached at Irving. And me and him bounce ideas, and he's like, "Hey, our district is tough, tough. Like, we've got to work really, really hard. We got to run. You know, a boy has to run sub 16 to get to regionals." I'm like, wow. "Okay, well, that's got to be your peak then. And then if they mm-hmm. do get to regionals, then hey, they can run it. They can they can maintain that peak, and then just see what they can do if they can get to state. Mm-hmm. You know, so that that's kind of the mindset that you have to have. And every person is going to be different. So with high school, it may be district, regional, state." With a college athlete, maybe to conference championships, or hey, I'm going to get through the conference championships. I'm one of the best ones. I'm going to go to nationals. Nationals mm-hmm. is usually three to four weeks after conference. So yep. that's got to be your mindset, your end goal, right? Oh, hey, I'm going to still have to qualify for nationals, but nationals where I want to be my best so I can go win a national championship. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and then for a other, you know, say like, you know, like me and you, we're training for a marathon, half marathon, a 5K. Hey, this is where our race is. Our race is on December 31st, whatever the case, New Year's run. Mm-hmm. Then I'm going to go mm-hmm. backwards from there, and so you can plan it all out. Uh, that's, mm-hmm. that's why I start with the peak and work backwards is just so we know, like, hey, where's the end goal? And then where are we going back? Like, where, where do we have to start? How do we get there? So I, I like the way that you describe that because in most people's minds, especially high school coaches, peaking is like this mystical idea of like oh what there's all these ingredients and all these variables and like we don't really know and like oh this guy ran his best race halfway through the season oh he peaked too early like what does that mean so i'm i'm glad that you're explaining this and uh my next podcast is actually going to be all about peaking with my buddy elliot and we're gonna kind of dive into like what it is, what it means, because he, in his mind, he's kind of like, I don't really believe in peaking. I just, and I'm like, okay, like explain, like, I understand, but what do you mean by that? And it's like, well, there's no, there's no special, uh, like, oh, you did too much or, oh, you did like, no, no, no. If you're training correctly and you're, and you have things planned out, then you reduce your volume you either maintain or increase your intensity. You make sure you're getting fully recovered, mm-hmm. and you've got a, a window of time where you're the most recovered, but you're also putting in the most intense work, and yep. your body's like, oh, okay, well, we are going to run really fast right now. Yep. Yep. But 
because you're not putting in the volume of training necessary to Im- continue improving or to maintain that improvement, you can only hold that for so long. So this, this idea that like peaking is, it's like a really hard thing to like master. And it's like, yep. eh, if you plan it out, then, and you, and you do everything the way you're supposed to along the way, then it's, it's kind of simple. It's just like you, yep. like uh, in strength in strength and conditioning, it's super simple. We do a deload week. Yep. Like if you're going to have a really, really, uh, intense competition or, you've trained really hard for maybe six or eight weeks and you need, you need a deload week. Okay. Yeah. Cut your volume in half, maintain your intensity. And then the following week, man, you go back to what you were doing a week or two previous and that weight tends to feel really light, really easy. Yeah. And it's like, as long as you have that programmed in and you understand like what variables you're adjusting, you're not changing a whole bunch of stuff. Like if you've been getting enough rest, if you've been focusing on your du- nutrition if you've been training intensely, mm-hmm. you cut back that volume and you maintain or increase the intensity a little bit, and the body's like, "Oh, I know exactly what we're doing here." Exactly. So. Exactly. And so, one thing that I do, um, so I call it the spring to success, um, is kind of what my whole model is. So, when you think about a spring, um, you know, if you pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it, then if you let go at the right time, it'll come back and it'll be flat. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you ever like when you were a kid, you're like, oh, I'm going to I'm about to wreck my brother's, you know, slinky or whatever the kid. And you just rip it. And then the things are bent and broke and it doesn't go back and it like limps over and all that kind of stuff. So if you think about Mm -hmm. that with your training, right, it can be, you know, with weightlifting, with running, with anything along those lines. If you push too hard for too long, that's when you get a bend in that, you know, in that slinky and it's going to break. And that's when Mm -hmm. injury occurs or whatever the case is. So, um you know, if you train at the right level and then you come back, then your all bodies, you know, next time you can maybe stretch it a little bit farther and a little bit farther. Mm-hmm. And then they're still coming back without, you know, bending or breaking or whatever the case is there. So mm. that's it, man. So let's talk about, uh, so for like a high school season, you're looking at roughly, you know, 12 to 20 weeks, depending mm-hmm. on how, how far into the summer you're starting or yeah. how early into the summer you're starting. So what, sure. what is, uh, so you're starting, let's say somewhere in that 12 to 20 week window. Yeah. Um, what does the peak phase look like? Yeah. So, um, peak phase is obviously those last, uh, three weeks. So during that peak phase, I like to do, um, just a lot of like race based stuff. Um, and I like to decrease the mileage. So just a little bit though, like a lot of, so say if I have a kid doing 50 miles a week, then that kid may go to like 42 to 40 miles a week. They're not going to just go, Hey, Mm -hmm. from 50 miles a week to 25 miles a week. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, your body has the potential of getting injured or anything along those lines. And you're just putting yourself in a a very tough position to try to recover because as you train, your body naturally swells. And so if over time, if I'm running, 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 and I'm have this swelling in my muscles or it's natural. And then I go to, Oh, Hey, I'm, I'm just going to cut everything in half and then try to be super, super intense. Then you have that, you know, that opportunity to, to, to get injured. And I don't want that right. As soon as we're about to run, try to run our best race of the season. Mm-hmm. Um, so obviously we're going to get more recovery. We just don't want to cut everything like super, super bad. Um, and, and so say if you have a kid that's doing double runs, we have a kid running on uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, he running six in the morning, four in the afternoon, then just cut those double runs. That's it. And then keep the morning runs just the same. Keep everything the same. Um, the mm-hmm. workouts may be a little bit shorter instead of doing, you know, eight by one K or six by one K you're doing, six by 600 or something like that and just a little Mm -hmm. bit faster pace so something just a little bit quicker without just demolishing your body um Mm -hmm. and then another thing that i that i'm a big proponent of is no over speed right so you've probably been there i've been there i know i've had a million kids like that have told me before like oh coach like i'm dead my legs are super tired right before i raced you know when i was at the Mm -hmm. college level I heard it so many times. 
just mm-hmm. kids that were at the high school level. Hey, coach, uh, dude, my legs were dead, but right before the race, you know, I was like, all right, what y'all do leading up to it? Well, we raced on Thursday. Wednesday, we ran 10 minutes. Tuesday, we did 10 100s at all-out speed. Mm-hmm. And I go, well, no wonder. And they're like, wow, we just, it was just like buildups. I was like, yeah, but you have lactic acid stuck in your body that you weren't able to get rid of. So if I want my kids to run the fastest there is, there's no, there's no special 200 that's going to make them faster at the end. You know, it's the hmm. buildup over time that's going to make them that good. So I don't do any over speed. I do controlled effort. So like the fastest, like besides, if it's an 800 runner, like in track season, obviously we might do some faster speed stuff. But for them, like their 400 speed is faster than it's fast enough. Like so, but like saying cross country at the end of the season, we're doing 200s, right? We're doing two sets of four by 200 meters. The fastest I want my kids to go is 800 meter pace. Mm -hmm. So their body can, you know, rid that, uh, you know, rid that lactic acid and be able to recover and feel ready to go whenever we are ready at that, at the big meet or the big race, whether it's the regionals or the state meet or whatever the case is. And I, I say a lot too, I'd rather you be under trained and healthy than over trained and injured, Mm -hmm. you know, Because a lot of people think, oh, more and more and more. Hey, I'm, coach, I'm about to run this big meet. i got to run faster. No, no, no. Everything that you've done up to this point in time is preparing you for this. So, I mean, other than that, like, it, the peak phase is, is pretty pretty easy to, to think about, you know. It's just uh, mm-hmm. you just be smart and don't overtrain. You know, don't try to run yourself into the ground. And mm-hmm. just let all the work that you've done leading up to that point in time, like, do its job, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, so. you're kind of, like, putting in all this work, and then you're finally giving the body time to fully adapt to it. Yeah. And the way that it does that the best is not by removing that stress completely. Yeah. It's by reducing that stress enough mm-hmm. that the body's like, oh, we've got extra energy to devote to recovery and repair, and yeah. pff, let's fully adapt. Not yeah. – Oh, we've got all this energy because we're not doing anything. (laughs) Yeah, I would say the peak phase is probably one of the most least important phases there is. Uh, Because, I mean, honestly, you don't really have to do anything special. Like, you just have to show up and be there, like, be present. Because you're not really going to lose much during that time. But you're not really going to gain anything either besides recovery, you know. So you're putting all, like... The meat and potatoes is the strength phase and the specific phase. Those are the two phases for me and the base. I mean, obviously, base phase is important, too. But those two phases, like, that's where you do all your work, all your intensity, all your hard efforts are coming from there. So the peak phase, you just got to just get to the line ready to go, you know. And that's what a lot of people think is they they overthink it and think that, oh, I've got to do something special. We got to do something. Coach, 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 coach. I got to do something else. And I had a kid, Martin Chavez. He like called me right the day before. Coach, um, so do I need to do some 200 extra? I was like, no, nope. We're doing a three mile temp threshold run and you're going to do some, you know, two, four hundreds at race pace. And then you're just going to be ready to go. Mm -hmm. Are you sure? Are you sure? Yes, (laughs) I'm 100 percent sure, you know. And sometimes people just get over they, – they think that some, they need something else. They need something more to, to do. But if you've done everything else, then the hay is in the barn. Yep. Quote Bill Bowerman said a long time ago. So Exactly. Sweet. So before the uh, the peak phase, you've got the specific phase. So yep. what goes on during that? During that? Yeah, yeah. So specific phase, uh, you know, it's, it's usually about four to six weeks. I like to do six weeks um, just so – I can go through my cycle twice and we'll talk about that kind of here in a minute once we kind of get through the, you know, the bulk of this. Um, so I do six weeks for the specific phase. So I have my, you know, my two or three weeks of my peak phase. And then from there I'll go six weeks backwards and that's where I'll have my specific phase laid out. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's a little bit different. I'll kind of just go over cross country first and then kind of touch into track a little bit. Uh, you know, with cross country, we're doing stuff that's specific to racing. What are you, what are you going to do in your races? Oh, you're running on grass. We're going to work out on grass. Like during mm-hmm. cross country season, most of the stuff that we're doing, we're doing on the grass. Uh, we may do like some tempo, longer tempo runs and all that good stuff on, uh, you know, the track or the road or something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but most of it's going to be on grass. We're going to work on, you know, some of our hills. We're going to work on 
um, race specific style stuff. So, you know, some of the examples that I have in here, uh, you know, for, for cross country styles, like five by one mile at threshold pace. Um, and, and I'll, I'll give y'all some kind of, you know, tools of your trade and where you can go and look at paces and stuff like that. Um, but so like five by one mile at threshold pace, that's for, you know, elite style runner. Hey, you're running eight K, which is about five miles. So we're gonna get five miles worth of work in, or Mm -hmm. say we have a, a girl that's training for the 5k at high school level 5a hey we're gonna do five by 1k at i call it critical velocity pace um Mm -hmm. and we're gonna we're gonna really work on going over hills and working on the grass and that kind of stuff um you know and and then one of my personal favorite workouts you know for the specific phase is um 10 by 20 by 400 10 to 20 by 400 at vo2 max so vo2 max is kind of like that 3k to 5k ish race pace that I, I like mm-hmm. to do and just a 60 second rest and we're just repeating that over and over and getting that muscle efficiency ready to go so whenever you do get to the race you're like oh coach i was running 440 pace 450 pace is going to be cake you know i'm like mm-hmm. yeah it is you're right you're right it is you know and it gets your your body efficient running at that certain you know threshold in those paces that when you get to the race like you're gonna be ready to go um but there's commonalities between, you know, cross country and track. But the only thing that's really different um, is for my 800 style kids, I like to do a little bit more of like 800 style race pace stuff. So we may do mm-hmm. like eight by 200 at 800 meter uh, race pace with a hundred meter jog or 60, you know, 60 second rest or mm-hmm. another workout that I like to do a lot too. Um, I have this on there is uh, 500 meters at 1500 meter race pace. Then you'll walk 100 meters and then 300 at 800. And then you got four to five minutes rest and then do two to three of those. And usually um, what I can do, it, it's it's kind of funny, is it, it's, it's weird how I found out how to do it. But I've, I've like n- put the nail on the head a couple of times is I put that time together and take 20 seconds off. And that's about what hmm. they can run for their 800. And wow. when I had it's 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 weird and i don't i don't know anything behind it or why Mm -hmm. um but i had uh two two guys because you just take the averages so say they run 208 207 and two and some whatever the case right 210 i take the average of those take 20 seconds off and i had i had three boys do this and one of them averaged 207 the other one averaged 209 and the other was 211 and they went 148 149 and 151 wow so and that was like a couple of weeks afterwards so that's a good workout to kind of gauge it and to look at it and go oh okay well that's what their capability of doing um mm-hmm. there so i mean a lot of this and during the specific phase we're still working on the tempos the long runs the easy mm-hmm. all that stuff you're it's not like you're just going oh hey i'm just getting rid of this right the specific phase, you're just raising that intensity up a little bit while keeping the volume maintained that you build up, that you built up over time. Um, and I think a lot of people think that you have to start doing all out speed or anything along those lines, but you don't really have to. Um, as long as you just up the intensity a little bit uh, and just keep the volume the same, because or, or or you can even decrease it just a little bit, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, if you do, then you're gonna you're gonna be a lot better off. Um, than those kids that just go, because I see a lot of people go, all right, I'm doing easy runs during the base phase, then tempo, 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 interval, 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 speed, speed, speed. And then by the time you get to speed, 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 you have no aerobic system left from that tempo running that you were doing. So mm-hmm. if you're still adding in those tempo runs, and they can even be, instead of a five mile tempo run at 530 pace, you could be doing a three mile threshold run at 510 pace, you know, just, mm-hmm. just kind of, you know, I'm just throwing numbers out kind of thing. Um, so your your volume is going down, but your intensity is raised up. So, you know, you're, you're really working on that style of stuff. And that's the, the specific phase um, just because you get to work a lot with your, you know, race specific style stuff. You know, that's 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 why it's a big key for me. And I I don't have kids running on the grass during cross during track season because during track season, you're going to run on the track. So we're mm-hmm. going to do most of our hard workouts on the track. So you get used to running on the track. Cause I, I had a buddy of mine, he coaches at Western Texas college and they have dirt roads 
out there in Snyder like no other. They have dirt roads everywhere. He's like, dude, we just did a lot of workouts on on the on the roads because it's so nice out here. You know, it keeps them off the track. He goes, but I felt like they didn't have the confidence of running fast on the track. And hmm. I was like, that's that's interesting, you know. So look at that and to hear from him about how he thinks that them not doing workouts and harder stuff on the track, they don't have the confidence when they get into a race to actually do it. So mm -hmm. that's that during a specific phase, you can really work on those kind of things, mentality as well as you know the physical aspect of it all. Yeah, I think related to that, I just saw a uh, tweet that um, Nick Willis put up where he was talking about how uh, you know very nice track club. Um, they've you know that's Mason Furlick who was third yeah. in the steeplechase and yeah. uh, Hobbs Kessler and yeah. like all these guys. A couple other guys, I think, as well. But those three, you know, like no injuries, and they've all run really, really well. Mm -hmm. And Willis was noting that I think he thought that part of that was that year round they get some spike work on the track, so that it's not all just like in the spring and into the summer they're in spikes, and then the you know mm -hmm. the rest of the year it's just in their trainers on the road or, or on grass like. Yep. year round because that's specific to to what they do like they're not cross country runners exactly they're track they're track racers right yep. so um that for them that was specific and he thought that that contributed a lot to not only sure. their their you know success and performance but also uh some injury prevention as well which is yeah. pretty interesting yeah and i think i think that's a big thing too because if you think about it like most tracks are pretty soft the only thing mm -hmm. is that I tell people is if you're running the same way all the time, turn around. Mm -hmm. Because if you, you're you always turning left, you know, so most tracks are banked a little bit to the inside. So you're going to be putting a lot of effort on the right-hand side. So it, it freaks people out. It'll freak people out. If you go, hey, all right, we're going to go opposite way today. And they're like, what, coach? No, I can't do that. I can't do that. Can't. Not I'm allowed. Like, yes, you can. Yeah, you can. There's nothing against <laughs> it. Like, we're just working, you know, and they're like, that felt so weird. That felt so weird. Like, yeah, but it's, you're good. Like you'll be fine, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so it's just the injury prevention side of it is a whole nother can of worms that you could get into, which would take us to tomorrow talking through it all. But <laughs> that's true. So we've gone peak. This is reverse order, right? So yep. peak and then specific. And now we're into the strength phase. So yep. tell us about that. Yep. So strength phase is kind of, I almost think it's the it's the backbone of your training, right? So you have your you obviously have your base phase. You're getting into it, but you're the strength phase. It, it just allows you to create that strong aerobic base uh, that you need at the end of the season to help you push you through um, the first two miles of the race. Because what you see a lot is in, in high school racing, kids go out really really well the first two miles and then they die the last mile, right? Hmm. And I am, I love, love, love racing for the back half. Like when Martin Chavez ran 1440 at the regional meet, he was in like 10th place at the two mile mark and won by 36 seconds. Wow. But he just blew everybody away because, you know, everybody mm -hmm. else was running really, really fast. And he was like, all right, I'm chilling. Like, let's go. And then he just like, I mean, it's like a mile and a half mark. He took off and just I mean, closed in 434 or something like it was something stupid Holy like that, cow. you know, Yeah. but this strength phase really, really helped him because he's never had that before. So, um, again, like if it, 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 the strength phase can go anywhere from four weeks to eight weeks, depending on kind of what you're training for. If you're training for the 5k, I would say six weeks is, is well good. Um, and then if you're, you know, doing marathon, half marathon, things like that, then I would go more eight weeks just so you could get a longer aerobic base to carry you through the marathon and those kinds of things there. Um, mm -hmm. And you don't necessarily need anything longer on the specific phase just because a two week cycle should get you through, you know, some really, really good workouts there. Um, you know, it, a lot of the strength phase is, you know, very structured workouts. Hey, we're going to do a lot of tempo runs, a lot of threshold runs, a lot of, you know, paced you know, one case, stuff like that. Um, and then one thing that I did add in there that I know I talked about is training where you're currently at, not mm -hmm. where you want to be. Right. Yeah. So that's a, that's a big thing for me, man. And I know me and you have talked about it before. Um, so during the strength phase, like 
I like to do a, a, a time trial at the very beginning because bef- this is usually before we're starting to race. So mm-hmm. I like to, I mean, we, July 9th, which yet yeah, 11 days ago, we did a time trial at Reedy. We did a one mile time trial. I get them on the track, see where they're at. And then I go, okay, now I can base workouts off of that. So mm-hmm. then I'll go, you know, to the, the 10 man running calculator, McMillan running calculator, Jack Daniels, V dot, whatever you want to use. There's a million different mm-hmm pace calculators to use and you can give these kids specific paces for their workouts Mm -hmm. um so if i if they're training for where they're currently at not where they want to be then we're going to limit those injuries they they should Mm -hmm. be able to run faster at the end of the season because they're training and just getting better and better and better and then when they start racing their body is able to run faster in the races because they're not just killing themselves in practice Mm -hmm. um and that's what I see a lot of too, is kids, you know, bef- before I started working with Martin, he would get injured every year about September, every year for three years in a row that I knew him, he got injured in September every year. And then this year in September, I held him back, held him back, like, you know, just like specifically held him from himself <laughs> kind of thing, you mm-hmm. know? And, mm-hmm. uh, in September he started running really fast. Like he, that's when he saw the switch of like, from a 15:30 guy to like a 15:0 guy, and then like, mm-hmm. hey, let's just get there, and when we're there, like you're gonna be ready to go. Um, so you know, whenever you're looking at it, like, it doesn't matter if you have a kid that came in and ran 4:30 last year, if they didn't run a single day over the summertime, and they're a five flat miler in their time trial, train them as a five flat miler. It mm-hmm. may take them two weeks to get back to where they should be, but you need to hold them back, like not necessarily hold them back, but let them train for where they're currently at. Mm-hmm. Because I see, I see a lot of times too that a coach will go, all right, well, this kid ran 4.30 during track season, so I'm going to train like a 4.30 kid now. No, mm-hmm. no, 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 no. We're not, he's not running the same style of workouts. He's not at the same, he's not at the same level that he was come, you know, May as he is in june or july you know it may take some some time off which you know they should take a little time off and it's okay to work back to it um Mm -hmm. but i think the reason that a lot of kids don't like to do that of train where they're currently at is because they look at it and they go oh crap like i'm not gonna be able to get back there again Hmm. you know Mm -hmm. um so whenever you have those kids that go Oh, well, coach, like I ran 427 in track and I, I just ran 445 for my time trial. You know, coach, what am I doing wrong? I'm like, you're not doing anything wrong. You know, I'm, mm-hmm. the, I'm not expecting you to be at your best right now. I'm expecting you to be at your best in November. Mm-hmm. So that's what we really look at and we work towards of going, hey, I want you to be a 422 guy in November. So you can mm-hmm. run a 1450 or you can run a 150 something and win a state title. And then mm-hmm. they go, Oh, okay. You know, that goes back to the why of like, why are we, why coach, why am I this? Like, you know, and I had, I had a girl, she's a, she was like a 615 miler in track season last year and through the base phase, like she's just, she's been training healthy. She's been doing her long runs. She's been doing seven, eight mile long runs, you know, four to five miles a day and doing our one-on-ones and some, just some light progressive work, tempo work, stuff like that. So far we've been training for like five weeks, maybe. And she runs 6.03. And she was pissed. Wow. And I was like, what? Why are, you, why are you mad? Why are you mad? Why are you mad? And she's like, well, I'm just not where I think I want to be. I was like, good. You know, <laughs> like, good. Like, I'm glad. Yeah, I'm glad. Stay right? hungry. Yeah. Because you're five weeks of training in and you ran a 12-second PR or whatever the case it was. Like, yeah. so, like, yeah, you're going to get a lot better come November. I said, you have so much left in the tank. That whenever we do get there, you're gonna go, oh crap! Like, coach, I'm a 540, I'm a 535 miler now, you know, and you know that's that's the big thing that kids just have to understand of just knowing that like, just because you take a little recovery time and you're not where you were at your very very best doesn't mean you can't get back there. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think the idea that progress is linear can be mm-hmm. super detrimental, and like when you understand like you're this is all undulating, so like your you know your peak before is is now different than Mm -hmm. you know what your peak will be and um like you might be at a low point 
but you're still higher than your previous low point yep. because you've put in this work. So you're, yeah, you're not where you were six months ago or three months ago, but you're set up so that you're, you're six months ahead of where you would be. Yes. Right. Exactly. So it's just, you're, it's, you know, yeah. it's kind of this wave that you're, you're heading in the right direction. And when you yeah. trust that process and when you know the why and they're going to buy into it. So, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. That's, that's, that's good. I, you know, I, I like this, the undulating thing. It's like, you're not going to, if you stay up here, you're going to make a hard turn. You're not going to be able to go, oh, okay. It's like a staircase, you know, staircase to success, man. Just one step at a time. And every once yep. in a while, you have to take two steps back so you can go up three steps higher, you know. Um, exactly. And, ju mm -hmm. and just seeing the long-term goal versus short-term. A lot of people are short-term. I want to see results now, you know. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, that's it's one of those things. When, uh, when I was doing some hiking up in Colorado, there's times where like, hey, we've got to get to that peak way, way up there. And so most of the time, you're heading up. But there's times where like, you go over, a, you crest a bit of a, uh, you know, a hill, and then you yeah. got to go down again to then reach the base of the next peak. And then you go back up and like, yeah, yeah you, your total vertical distance was, you know, X, whatever. But like you went down a little bit. There were some valleys in there that you had to go down into and then go back up. Yeah. And like, that's just, yeah. that's the way you climb a mountain. Like it's not always straight up. Yeah, my buddy Matt Daniels, he uh, he's a mountain runner. He got fourth in 2019 or 2020 at Western States, you know, the 100-mile run, all that stuff. He's mm -hmm. super fast. He's a sub-four-minute miler and runs ultra marathons. So he's just a freak of That's nature, crazy. you know. And yeah. he told me one day, he said, uh, what did he say? He said, you know, the thing about mountain running is that you don't look at the hill that you're going up. You just enjoy the downhills along the way. <laughs> you know and i'm like yeah i guess that's right you know and i was like i was yeah. in there i was thinking i was like what like you want to get to the top he's like no nah, man he goes that's the hard part you just enjoy the downhills going as downhills. you go i'm like nice that's that makes a lot of sense so you know i was like that's that's good to think about you just enjoy your downtime enjoy the the time and the and the grind to get back up to the top so yeah that's good so before the strength phase we've got the base phase so yep. what is that? Yeah, so foundation, man. We kind of talked about it at the very beginning, the foundation of all your training. It's where you, you know, during that summertime or like the wintertime and Christmas, um, I call it basketball season because most of the kids play basketball or we watch basketball or whatever the case is there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's, it's where you really prepare yourself for the whole season. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to do a lot. You don't have to run a lot. You don't have to run 100 miles a week. You don't have to run – Every single day, like we start off at, at Reedy, we started off with four days a week. Hey, we're going to go Monday, Tuesday, Friday, Saturday. That's it. You know, you day off or two days and two days and whatever the case. So mm -hmm. it, it allows you to get your body back to, to running again after you take some time off. So say you have the state championships in May. Then I'm going to take from May, you know, to the, like May 15th to June 1st off. Then June 1st, I'm going to mm -hmm. start my base phase. Getting getting easy mileage in, getting your body used to running, you know, because mm -hmm. a lot of kids when they first start, like especially if you know you have the kids that show up August fifth, everybody else has been running since June. Those mm -hmm. kids train for two weeks, they may be able to keep up. They may be able to keep up, and then, oh, coach, my ankles hurting today. Coach, my shins hurting today. Coach, my knees hurting today. Okay, yep. that's that's the growing pains, you know. Versus, hey, we have we have ten weeks to get through it, you know. So during that base phase. You give your body time to really um, adjust to the training stimulus and the cycle of everything that's going on. Um, mm -hmm. And the one thing that I always do is in the base phase. It doesn't matter if you are a 5K runner, a miler, or a marathoner. At the very beginning, I like to go through and do one-in-ones. So, uh, you know, one-in-ones are a, a workout that's effort-based. I tell kids to do – do it off of 5k effort so we're gonna go uh, we're gonna start with like six of them and then move all the way to like 15 so hopefully over time we'll go like 6 8 10 12 15 so usually about six weeks so um so during that like the first three weeks we'll just do easy running hey go out 20 30 minutes a day get your body used to it again we'll work up the volume get it up 
So what those one and ones are is we do one minute at 5K effort and one minute slow jog, and then right back into it again. So hmm. a lot of people think this is backwards. Like, oh, you're doing speed work already, but at the very beginning of the year. So there's a couple of reasons why I do that. The first reason is to work on form and efficiency. Because if I just go, all right, kids, we're going to go and do tempos every single day, then their bodies are not going to be as efficient as if they're doing some kind of speed maintenance style workouts. I call it speed maintenance, but it's more just getting your body moving, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, So with six of them, you're running hard for six minutes. Like that's a mile, like maybe, you know, exactly. So, um, you know, even if 15 of them, you're working hard for 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. So the, and, and the reason I do those is because it allows us to get our, our volume up without the intensity being super, super high because you're having to run for one minute. Like, yeah, I mean, one minute you can do that. Yeah. You can get, take somebody out that's never run before and go, okay, Hey, we're going to do six by one minute on with one minute recovery. I've got girls that never run cross country in their life and they were doing the workout with no problem. Like they Mm -hmm. weren't running as fast as maybe some of the other girls were, but they were doing it with no problem. Mm -hmm. So it allows me to go, okay, Hey, we just had 15 quality minutes of uh, like at the end of it. Say we, at the end of the sea, at the end of that, you know, cycle of six weeks, I've got 15 quality minutes. So now when we do our tempo runs or we do longer intervals, we do one K's, 800s, whatever the case is, mm-hmm. then we can, we can go 15 minutes of volume because we're already at that. So, um, mm-hmm. all right, Hey, we're doing a two and a half mile tempo today. We're doing a two mile tempo because you've already done 15 minutes. So you can handle 18 minutes at a slower intensity or, yep. Hey, we're doing 800s. Um, we're instead of doing, you know, uh, we're going to do 800s at, you know, three flat, but you're going to do four of them now. So that's 12 minutes, or you're going to do five of them at three minutes. So you're getting the same in time um, mm-hmm. instead of, and then we don't, just don't have the same intensity at super, super, super high um, mm-hmm. versus it's different. Like even my top boy is running like 450 to 510 pace. You know, most mm-hmm. of the boys are 520 to 530 pace. So they're not running super, super hard. I just want to run mm-hmm. off of their 5K. Hey, what is what is my 5K going to feel like mentally? And get them mm-hmm. into that 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 mental state of, hey, we're, I'm running my 5K effort. I'm running my 5K effort, you know. Um, and it, it's, it, it puts my kids and even the other athletes on a, I feel like, a step ahead of everybody else. Because everybody else starts with, short like tempos and tempos and tempos and they have no efficiency in their legs versus when my kids get to the point where they're doing tempos or they're doing progressive runs or they're doing long intervals that their body is efficient at that pace that they're going to be mm-hmm. able to you know handle that and you know most of the time we're doing these one ones on the grass and sometimes like i i want the kids to run barefoot I'm like, hey, you're, if we're on the grass, it's soft grass, really, really nice, mm-hmm. nice grass. Uh, mm-hmm. Frisco, Frisco, really, really takes care of their parks and facilities. And uh, so, like, hey, get on the grass, go barefoot. Are you sure, coach? Why? I'm like, it's just gonna help. Like, it's gonna help with your adaptation, your mm-hmm. foot strength, all that kind of stuff, and help limit those injuries later on down the road. I said, if you're running for mm-hmm. 12 minutes, like six minutes hard, like it's not gonna hurt you. And they're right. like, oh, okay, you know. And then like, uh, you see a lot uh, less lower leg injuries when we do a lot of our barefoot stuff like that Mm -hmm. um you know and then so we're during that base phase we're working on obviously building up the volume you want to kind of get to by the end of the base phase i say you want to be about 80 to 85 percent of the volume you want to reach for the entire year um and then during that strength phase you can add the rest and get to that 100 percent, so you can kind of maintain and then start raising the intensity up Mm -hmm. um because I'm, I'm a big proponent of don't raise volume and intensity at the same time because that's mm-hmm. when injury occurs. You know, we we know that with everything, with mm-hmm. strength training, with running, with whatever the case is. Um, so and then so I have the one and ones one day a week, usually Wednesday or Tuesday, the middle workout of the week. And then on Friday is when we do our other workout. Um, I incorporate some kind of longer aerobic style work. So we're doing like maybe a progression run where they go, say if uh, I have a 530 miler, they're going to go 630, 620, 610, 6 flat, 550, something like that, right? So mm-hmm. it's nothing that's super hard, you know, but they're like, they're getting some aerobic development on the back end of this run uh, with mm-hmm. a couple, e- like you know, moderate miles beforehand. 
or hey, we'll do a two and a half mile tempo run at six flat pace. And they're like, oh, okay, well, I can handle that. I can handle it. So the mm-hmm. intensity is just not super high during the base phase, but it allows you to get that volume up just so you can get the body used and adapted to that training stimulus and cycle like that. I love that, man. Yeah. Like, that's one that's one of the things that uh, in the in that book that I mentioned earlier, uh, Consistency is the Key, he talks yeah. about like one of the pillars is you've got to rev the engine yep. pretty often. You know, that doesn't have to be a daily thing, but like at least yeah. weekly, you've got to do a little bit of volume at your race pace. Yep. Yep. And that's where those one and ones come into play, man. Yeah. So even he, early, early in the season. Exactly. So he, he likes, uh, he's like, Hey, if, if you're not programming it in an easy way to incorporate that is to work strides into like run. your longer run where you're yep. just going like, you know, think like a hundred meters at race pace, just like, Hey, this telephone pole to that telephone pole. And then during my long run, I'm going to do that, you know, five times yep. just so yep. that just so you're incorporating that speed that way you're always, uh, your body's never shocked by anything yeah. at race pace. Like, yeah. And that's, that's one thing I was about to touch on too, during the base phase that we kind of start. So I do two. So the way I set up my schedule is just cause I'm at the high school level now when I was at the college level is a little bit different and I'll kind of work through that after. Um, but at the high school level I do Monday is a long run day. Tuesday's a recovery day. Wednesday's a workout day. Thursday's a recovery day. Friday's a workout day. And then Saturday is, usually like an easier run and Sunday's their recovery day. Mm -hmm. Um, So I do that so I can be there Monday, Wednesday, and Friday during the quality workouts because at the high school level, can't necessarily meet with them on the weekends. They've got Mm -hmm. this and that going on, whatever the case is there. Yep. So on Tuesdays and Thursdays on those easy days, we incorporate strides. Um, So I've done it a couple different ways that way. That's the way that Tom Schwartz kind of taught me to do it. Um, You know, Hey, we're doing a 40 minute run. The latches are just go out 15 minutes, come back. And then in your last 10 minutes, I want you to do six strides. I don't care if you do, you know, do a two, like do 150 and then you take off for 350 or take off for 400 meters. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. But you're usually getting your body going. And then the mm-hmm. other way that I do strides is I have my kids, hey, after the run, they're done. Kick your shoes off. We're going to get on the grass. You're going to go 100 meters of a buildup. So basically start at like that 5K effort. And by the end of it, I want them like getting close Moving. to their max, you know, mm-hmm. getting the legs turned over. Um, because one thing that I've heard a lot is you don't get fast by running slow, mm. right? You know, I mean, if you don't run fast, you will never be fast. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, and that's what a lot of my kids, like they, they I had a girl, she's, she's like, coach, I could run six flat for the mile, but I can't run, you know, I can't run 210 for the 800. I'm like, well, let's work on it. You know, she's like, mm-hmm. So she has no speed whatsoever, you know. Um, so those strides really, really help with that and help their turnover along with the one and ones as well. So that's just kind of another thing that I add in, starting adding in the base phase. And you can start mm-hmm. with two of them and then four and then six. And then maybe by the end of the season, you're doing eight. Like when I was at the college mm-hmm. level, we were doing eight on, uh, you know, two days a week and then during the after the long run. So, mm-hmm. you know, three days a week, we're doing really, really like fast strides, getting the legs turned over in efficiency um, you know, to really work on that. And then you can either do them barefoot or this is a time that you were kind of talking about, uh, Mason Furlick and all those guys is you could put on your spikes, spikes. Yeah, mm-hmm. and just get your body used to it. And that's why I told the kids, I'm like, Hey, you can start bringing your spikes and you can do your strides. in. I'm like, why do we need to wear spikes? All right. I'm like, so now you can wear them now. So whenever we put them on in August or September, you're not going to go, Oh my gosh, my calves are toast. Mm-hmm. You know? Yep. So it's just it's just getting that adaptation of the body ready to, to to run fast and do those things there. Yeah, like you don't do the entire workout in spikes. Yeah, no, 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 no. You know, like yeah. you're you're slowly incorporating these things, and like that's I think that's the mistake that so many people make. Like, well, I'm gonna be racing, you know, 5k in spikes, so I might as well just do my whole tempo in spikes. Like, oh, that's yeah. a bad idea, bro. Like, maybe don't do yeah. that. Yeah, and so, so let's let's touch on that real quick. So. Are you a, a fan of like kids having multiple pairs of shoes? Like, so that's, I'm, I'm a big component of, all right, Hey, you have your easy, you know, your easy run sh- shoes that you, I want you to wear for easy runs, for long runs, for warm ups and cool downs. And then, mm-hmm. Hey, I want you to go get some, 
um, you know, some training flats or some, Mm -hmm. you know, some, there's a million and different like marathon shoes now that, you know, 10 K racing shoes with the alpha flies and, you know, Saucony ride or whatever the heck they are, you know? And so that's what I I like my kids to be able to change into that. I mean, what do you kind of do with your kids there? We, in an ideal world, everyone would have like a few different pairs. Like that would be great. Um, right now for what I'm doing, like I have, I have a pair of, uh, there's stock any racing flats and like I do my speed workout in those. Um, but like right now I'm just, I've got two pairs of shoes that I just alternate every day for my workouts. And, and that's just kind of how I'm doing it right now. But it'd be really nice if, if we could work that into like, you know, like for your longer runs, maybe it's okay if you've got a shoe that's got a little bit more cushion. Like you yep. probably don't want to be doing your long runs in a, you know, in a racing flat. Like exactly. you don't need to do that right now. But yeah. so yeah, like I would love for the kids to have multiple shoes and um, we try to set it up to where, you know, like, hey, you guys should definitely get a pair of new of new running shoes, you know, in July so that you've got yeah a solid broken in pair of shoes for the rest of the season. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I encourage them to have, you know, have a few pair, like think about it like, uh, like a golfer, you know, like he's not, not using one club. He's got, you know, the club that he tees off with and, and he, you know, that he's using as a driver. And then, you know, you've got all your, all your woods, all your irons, your putters Mm -hmm. and, and all that. So it's kind of like that. Like you, there's different, shoes that are for different purposes and like spikes fit in there as well and they Mm -hmm. each have a role and you know you need to practice with all those for sure yeah and that's so what i what i do is so i work with run on as well um and i i tell them hey i'm gonna have my kids come over here and uh you know get them some spikes get them fitted and if you go like for other coaches if you go around dallas fort worth san antonio wherever wherever you're at even if you're in a different state go to a local running store and just be like, Hey, can I bring my kids here? Like to, to try on shoes, to do things like that. Mm-hmm. And most of the time those places will give those kids discounts because like they want to help the community. They want to help those kids. So with run on, like we're getting a discount for our kids going over there and getting new shoes when most of them need them yeah. anyways, you know? Yep. And so we go over there and they help us out and they make sure the kids get the right kinds of shoes and don't just mm-hmm. go, Oh, that looks pretty. I'm going to get that, you know? fits yeah. them makes them like so they're the having fitting. a shoe and the that's the big so thing important. man because yeah. a lot of people go to academy and say well which one do you got? well that's got a cool color i'm gonna get that and then a kid get injured you know yeah so oh, yeah. that's that's the big thing is just going to the running stores or running warehouse a lot of other coaches can go look at that um mm-hmm. there's all kinds of discounts you can get there uh you know and it kind of lays it out for you but the, the way that I like to do it, and I tell my kids a lot, like I have a bunch of kids, like we were fortunate enough to have a, a good neighborhood, good, you know, backing with all the parents and stuff like that. So if I tell the parents, hey, we need this, they're going to get it for the kids. Mm-hmm. Um, so I tell them like, hey, you need a pair of training shoes. I, I don't care if you, you, you can run those for your easy days, for your long runs, for your warm ups, cool downs, all that good stuff. Um, but like for your workouts, I want you to have a pair, like a lighter pair of shoes. Saucony Kinnevar, mm-hmm. uh, Saucony, uh, mm-hmm. the Ride, Isa, or whatever they are, you know, yep. Um, yep. The, like a Nike flat or something along those lines. Because mm-hmm. so so what it does is uh, uh, hey, you do your warm up, you do all that good stuff, and then you do your drills, and then you put your, your shoes on, and then we'll do the workout. And mm-hmm. then we'll cool down barefoot or whatever the case is, and then go from there. And parents ask me all the time, why do you do that? Why do you do that? Because I, I like to structure – my workouts just as I do a race, mm-hmm. you know? So when a kid gets to a race, they know exactly what to do. They don't have to mm-hmm. do anything special. Cause you, you have a lot of a kid that goes, Oh, well coach, like what, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? What do you do for practice? Well, I do my 10 minute warm up. I do my drills, do strides. And then we go do a workout, do that. Mm-hmm. It's exactly well, the same. How, how much am I supposed to? Well, how long does it take you to warm up and in, in practice? Uh, 20 minutes. Okay. That be, th- I'll give you a little bit more time so you can get to the line and put your jersey on. But mm-hmm. like, I like to replicate everything the same. And that's one thing that, that mm-hmm. I think coaches need to realize is you don't have to have your kids warming up an hour before the race. Mm-hmm. Like, I like my kids. Like, hey, we're warming up. We're doing our drills. We're doing our strides. You're putting your spikes on. And then they're like, 
oh sh- crap, we've got to be on the line in five minutes. You yeah. know, and then we get to the line, we race, and then we go. Yeah. Because we're still warm. We're ready. Like, our body is just ready to go versus the kids that mm-hmm. have been warming up for two hours, and then they're dead tired, and they're, like, not sweating they're anymore. anxious right? just waiting. Exactly. Like, exactly. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. And so people look at us, like, y'all got to go. I'm like, hey, we're fine. We're fine. We're just fine. Just we're used to this. We're, yep. We'll be just fine. They're not gonna. They're not going to start without us. If they do, then we'll catch up, <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> and I've, I've never had anybody late for a race yet, so knock on wood there. Um, <laughs> but, you know, and most of the time, like, if, if you do it just like you do in a race or practice, then it's going to be easy. You're not going to have – you're going to have less stress, less anxieties, all that good stuff and because it's just what – you do what we do, you know. And that's one of the things that my kids and Melissa loved. They loved – they loved literally getting the line and sweating still, you know. Mm-hmm. And they were like, hey, we're about to roll. Like, and even when I was at Commerce, like, I had the kid that ran 148 and 800 – he literally did his warm up and he was doing strides like as they were like lining him up on the track. I'm like, hey, you gotta go. <laughs> oh, okay, coach. He like runs over there and he goes, Do run your stride yeah. to the start right now. Go. You know, and that, you know, so that's it. You know, you just don't wanna be, you don't wanna be like overzealous. I'm like, oh, they're gonna wait for me, you know. But like, you wanna do it where you're ready to go when the time, when, when the gun goes off, you know? Yeah. So. Primed. Yeah, that's, that's a little segue there, but, you know, that's something that's important yeah. that I think a lot of coaches and a lot of athletes should know is you don't have to do anything special right before the race. There's nothing crazy that's going to make you super fast. So doing 30 strides in your spikes is not going to make you ready to go any more than, like, just doing what you do in practice, you know? Yep. So. Yeah, don't do anything different. Like, if, you're, if you've baked it into the cake for, you know, Monday through Friday, Monday yeah. through Saturday, whatever the case is, like yeah. – your body will know exactly what to do. Like, oh, exactly. we do this before every single hard workout. All right, I'm going to do that. Or we yep. do this before every single workout. This is the process. This is the routine. Yep. That's one less thing you have to stress out about. And and then the body is physiologically prepped. It knows yep. exactly what to do. They know they, It knows what's coming next. It's like, oh, yes. I, know, I know what about to do now. We're about Intensity to Intensity now. Yep. Yes. Exactly. Yep. That's, that's exactly. beautiful. So we've gone peak – and then specific, and then strength, and then base, and now we are on recovery. So what is the recovery phase? The most important phase there is, I feel like. Um, So it's that phase after the end of the season. So, or I put it at the beginning, because you're usually coming off of recovery once you go into your base phase. Um, Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like that middle ground, right? A lot of people go, they're, you're coming off like a really, really great season. You just won a state title. You just ran a PR. You did all these things. Your energy's flowing. You're, you know, you 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 want to do it. You're there. You're excited, and you're like, okay, where do we go now? And then the coach is like, all right, we need like to take a week off, or you need to take ten days of just twenty minutes a day. And they're like, what? You know, so that this is that recovery phase is that releasing of the spring. Letting mm-hmm. the spring come down and relax itself. Because mm-hmm. if you keep pulling, you may be able to hold it off for a while, but then you're going to get to the point where it's going to go, nope, boom, you know? Yeah. So There's no more bounce. Phase, There's no more elasticity. Exactly. And that recovery phase doesn't have to be long. It doesn't have to be like two weeks or a month or whatever the case is. I like to do it where it's just like seven to ten days. And I'll give them like four or five days completely off. Hey, I don't want you to run for five days. Just, just easy, just – recover just feel good just go play disc golf go play just go do something else besides running get their mind off of it get the mentality back where they're like oh hey like this is like i I I enjoy this again i'm not overdoing Mm -hmm. it i'm not killing myself yeah i miss running i miss exactly exactly hungry for that yep exactly so and then you get to that recovery phase (laughs) i got i got visitors over here it's funny um (laughs) But so when you're in that recovery phase, then so like literally from seven to 14 days is what is about the max that I like to do. Mm-hmm. After that five days of just, hey, just easy, easy recovery. Hey, let's go into just every other day or easy for 20 minutes a day. Just mm-hmm. getting the body used to doing it. Go on the grass, recover. Let your body just relax a little bit without detraining. So, like mm-hmm. I said, there's a difference between a recovery phase and a recovery months, right? We see yeah. a lot of that in high school. Right? Sure. Kids are like, oh, I'm taking my recovery phase. Good. I'll see y'all in August. I, you know, 
It's it's April. I'm be done. I'm I'm going to the lake. You know. <laughs> so that's where you see the difference. So you want to make sure that you're you're doing the right kinds of things, um, but you're also able to recover and like feel good, and, and be ready to prepare yourself for that big next push. Right. Mm-hmm. So you've already you're already up here. You're a 15, 35 K guy. You're running well. You're doing really, really good. OK. Hey, next time, like we're going to have to push past that. Try to run 15, 10, 15 flat, whatever the case is there. If you don't, then say if you keep pushing through and I've seen this a lot, too. You have kids that keep pushing through that phase and then they get to their specific phase and they're running 15, 35, 15, 32, 15, 38. Like they're running right above where their PR is and they just feel like they're they run out of gas. Right. Mm-hmm. And then. Boom, injury. And yep. they go, what the heck? What happened? What happened? I'm like, you didn't allow your body to recover. It's, that's why, you know? So it, mm-hmm. it's it's so, so important, but it can be overdone too. So that's why I think it's the most important phase is because like you can over you can overdo it and, and be too recovered or you can underdo it and feel like crap, you know? Um, yeah. So it's a fine line and a boundary of finding what a what works for you and what's going to allow your body to get back, um, because you know just just like I do, if you take a year off, it's like it's hard to get back and do that or, and stuff again. Or ten years. Like, yeah, ten years exactly off. right. There's yeah. some people that are probably like, he is so right, you know. <laughs> um, I didn't but, run for ten years, man. Yeah. Yeah, you're back at it now, though. So back at it now. Yeah, but you know, it, it's just it's just the big deal of, of like knowing the uh, the difference between too much and too little, and not overdoing, not underdoing it, and just because in every one of those phases, you can like in the base phase, and the strength phase, specific and peak, like you can underdo it and still run fast. Yeah, you know, you could yep. you could you could train under where you're currently at. Like you could run 30 miles a week and still be a good runner. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, but in the recovery phase, if you don't really do much, then you're kind of, kind of feel like crap. So, you know, that just, it is what it is. So, yeah, you're, you're not going to have your full potential for the next season Mm -hmm. or you're, if you're taking a month or two off now, you're just, you're losing time that you could be putting in that foundation. So I think for coaches coming off of track season, you need to know, and plan ahead for cross country season so that you can be like, Hey, you, all my cross country athletes, like, Hey, you have two weeks, you've got 14 days or you've got 21 days yep. to, to begin this process again, because, yeah. you know, come, come this date in, yep. you know, June or whatever, like we're starting the base phase. Yeah. And then from there we're going into the strength phase and then the specific phase. And then, you know, the peak phase, like this exactly. is the process, but if you don't have it planned out, if you aren't looking at dates and working back from there doing this, this whole mm-hmm. setup, like, like you have, you know, laid out very, very yeah. simple. Um, you're, you're going to, you're going to be playing catch up and then you're going to try to rush things like, Oh, well I only have four weeks and I, I, I've got to do, work two more phases in like, so, hey, it's, yeah, it's too late. Like, yeah, for sure, man. Should have planned it out. Yep. Yep. So. Um, well, shoot, man, we've got a lot more stuff to cover here, but I think <laughs> we can, it, it, it'll go by pretty quick. This stuff is, uh, you know, very, it, it all kind of runs together. So, Sweet. um, you know, and if you want to, I can even kind of share my screen a little bit and kind of, so people can have a, uh, um, you know, like a visual to look at as well as we can kind of go Sweet. through and talk about it. If you want to do that. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, Cool. So, um, for everybody first, watching, go to YouTube. Yep. yep. I mean, for everybody listening, go to yep. YouTube. Go to YouTube. It'll be on there. Um, all right. So tell me if you can see. I see a blank screen. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Awesome. Sweet. So, um, as you can see right here, so this is kind of the, the nuts and bolts for all of you that are seeing it now. This is very, um, very new. So, I'm going to, I'm going to put it all the flair and all that good stuff on it. So we I have talk- a feeling that, uh, Skype is going to cut off the left edge of that. So is there any way you can move that to the very middle of your screen? Um, let's see. Um, 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 um. Let's see if I can do like a full view. That should be good right there. Oh, that's good right there. 
I think okay. so. All I right, think cool. Cut, cut off that stuff, so we should be good okay. there. All right, cool. So um, as you can see, we already talked through kind of how to create that proper training plan and what it looks like and what some of, you know, the beat, the peak phase, the specific strength base, all that kind of stuff, right? So um, I usually like a 20-week layout. Um, and sometimes that, that might be a little bit long or whatever the case is, but if you can try to do the best you can of getting the most out of it. And if, and if anything, I would cut the base phase just a little bit. So instead of doing an eight week base phase, a base phase, do a four week one or a six week one, um, and cut it there instead of cutting your strength phase or your specific phase. Um, sure. so, cause that's kind of your nuts and bolts of it all. But anyways, mm -hmm. so kind of where I've got my, my mindset and my mental, uh, you know, thoughts of all this is from uh, Bowerman. So I have a buddy of mine that, that trains with Bowerman and then um, Dawn Grunigal, she's a, a runner out of Dallas. A lot of us know her. Um, yep. she's, she's a great runner and she ran for uh, Nike Oregon Project back in the day um, before they disbanded and all that stuff. So what they do is they do a 21 day cycle basically three week cycle, right? Mm -hmm. So where they go through and they'll do a long run and they'll do two easy days and then they'll do a, a long interval style workout then two easy days and a tempo run, two easy days and then a speed workout. So in my mindset, I was thinking like, if, if that's what the professionals do and they're the best of the best, then why shouldn't the high school athletes? So as you can see here, um, on the week one, it has two workouts. So say if I'm lining my workouts to be on Wednesday and Friday, then uh, workout number one is going to be like a shorter tempo in hills. Um, and this I'll, I'll pretty much run this all the way through the strength specific and peak phase. Um, during the, the base phase, like I still told y'all earlier, we do a lot of one and ones and stuff like that. And I'll get through that in just one second. Um, mm -hmm. But so think about this, the strength specific and peak phase right here. So week one, a shorter tempo with hills. So we're working on our strength right there, maybe like a three mile tempo and then um, six by 30 second hills afterwards. And then workout number two is going to be a longer style tempo. So maybe a five mile tempo run instead of a three mile tempo run. And then the week two is going to be a tempo run in a long interval. So that we're going to come back and do another tempo. We're still getting that aerobic development. And then we're going to throw in a long interval. And that long interval is going to have, you know, 1Ks, 800s, mile repeats, stuff along those lines, working mm -hmm. on that threshold style. Okay. Um, and then the week three is going to be a long interval and a short interval. This is that speed maintenance. This is those, uh, you know, the two by four by 200 meters, or uh, you could throw in one in ones, or you can throw in the, you know, strides in the middle of a run or whatever you want to do there. Um, mm -hmm. And so basically with this, it allows you to continually train every aspect of your aerobic system from high end aerobic, you know, speed style stuff to, you know, long, slow aerobic system style stuff. So mm -hmm. you're a, a, a well-rounded athlete. And, and one thing I like to say a lot is if you don't train it, you'll lose it. So if like if you say if, if you just did week one for the first six weeks and then you did week three for the last six weeks, then by that end of that last six weeks, your tempo abilities are going to be way, way down than what they were. So just think about that. And, and that's just how I do it um, mm -hmm. is to continually grow and grow and grow. And so say the first week, um, I might do a three mile tempo run. And then the next time we come around, it might be a four mile tempo run mm -hmm. or it might, like I said down here, it might be a three mile tempo run at six flat. And then in, when we get into the specific phase, it might be a three mile tempo run at 545 pace because our intensity went up, but the, the volume stayed the same. Mm -hmm. So that's just something to think about there. Um, and then kind of, this is the base phase, kind of what it looks like there. Um, you know, easy runs and then a progressive run and a 45 minute long run or Right here, that's when we can do – like a, that Wednesday is when we can do like the one and ones or that kind of stuff there. Mm -hmm. um, so that kind of works through it. And then – so you all be able to get this pretty soon. This is kind of how I structure workouts. Um, so this first one right here is an example of a Tuesday-Friday workout. 
Um, so as you can see on Monday, it's an easy run with some strides. Tuesday is a, a warm up and a workout and a cool down. Pretty simple stuff. And then Wednesday is another easy run. Thursday's an easy run. Friday's a workout. Saturday's a rest day. Sunday's a long run. So that's one way you can do it. Um, or, you know, a Wednesday and say right here, this second week right here in the middle um, is with a race. So on this is like your cross country style seasons, right? Mm -hmm. This is how I like to do it if we are racing that week. Um, so two easy runs Monday and Tuesday. Um, just let the body recover, recover, recover. And then Wednesday, we're going to do a workout to kind of prepare you for that race. And then Thursday and Friday are going to be easy days. And then Saturday is going to race. And then Sunday is going to be easy long run. So say you normally have a kid that's running a 10 mile long run. Um, say they run a race on Saturday and then Sunday, we're going to do something like seven to eight miles, just to easy pace just to get their body, you know, just another workout in and not over, overdo it before we, you know, have to go back into the week again. Mm -hmm. um, and then this last one is more of like a track stimulation style. So you're usually racing on Thursdays or Fridays or something like that. So how I do it is Monday, you have an easy run. Tuesday is a workout. Wednesday is just a shakeout run. Thursday is a race. Friday's an easy run, Saturday rest, and then Sunday a long run. So you can take those and you can adjust it how you want to. I mean, like I was telling mm -hmm. you earlier, now I change my long run from Sunday to Monday and then Wednesday mm -hmm. and Friday are my workouts. So it's not necessarily, yeah. hey, well, I have to have this same every single week, but you can change it up and do as, as you please with it without mm -hmm. just going, oh, well, I, hey, I only get to see my kids Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Then – Hey, if that's the case, work out Tuesday, work out Thursday, work out Saturday, you mm -hmm. know, <clears throat> and then have them the other days. They're doing an easy run on their own. So they're not missing any quality days there. Right. Um, so that kind of gives you an idea of like a non race week and then a race week during cross country and a race week during track. And then um, so now, like I said, this is this is kind of going pretty quick. So I'll go through this and then we can kind of talk a little bit more in depth on it. Sure. Um, so. We talked about starting at the peak and going backwards, right? So when we look at it, here's that peak, the two weeks there, and then we go specific and then strength phase and then base phase. So what mm -hmm. I did is I just literally just worked backwards. Um, so if you look in that base phase, this is kind of what we talked about earlier. The first three weeks, easy mileage, and then you start adding some strides in. And mm -hmm. then I talked about the one and ones. So week four, five, six, we're going to add in some one and ones, one and ones plus a progressive run. So we'll have like the one and ones on Wednesday, a progressive run on Friday. And then the next week, a one and ones on Wednesday, a light tempo on Friday. And then I'm going to get that time trial. I'm going to say, you know, hey, let's see where you're at off of five weeks of training. That's literally mm -hmm. where we're at right now. Uh, on, on, my, mm -hmm. on my team, that's where we're at right now. So you can see I'm actually I'm, I'm practicing what I preach here. I'm doing kind of, you know, everything that I'm and giving out. I'm not, you know, just giving out stuff so people go the opposite way or whatever the case is. <laughs> uh, but you can see that here, you know, they have that time trial and that just says, OK, hey, this is where we're at. This is where we want to be. And then, then I can base the next workouts, the two in ones off of their 5K effort based off the time trial and the progressive run mm -hmm. tempo. Right. Mm -hmm. And then so as you see. Uh, we start moving to that three week cycle as we get into the strength phase. We have the tempo, 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 long interval, long interval, short interval. And then, so you see, I don't have any races like added in there. So mm -hmm. during that strength, strength specific and peak phase, you're going to have races. So say if one week you have a tempo run and you have a race that week and you go, Oh, I have a tempo and a long interval. What do I do? Use your race as a tempo run. Right. Because mm -hmm. it's going to be a tempo style effort, maybe a little bit harder. Um, mm -hmm. And then you can do a long interval to prepare you for that um, versus going, well, I got to get two workouts in this week. So Tuesday and Thursday, we're going to do workouts and then Saturday we're going to race. I, I've seen it happen. It's fine. Like, you can do that. But your kids are going to be a lot more tired at the end of the at the end of the season than they yep. are if you just do that one workout. And then another thing that I like to do, too, is adding workouts to the back end of races. Mm -hmm. and people will think like parents will think i'm insane after you can't do that 
Those they kids just are ran their class. heart out. Yeah, they ran they as hard as they could. Yeah. yeah. Okay, you ran for 15 or 20 minutes. We do workouts that are 30 minute long. You know, whatever the case is. Like. Yeah. And they go, oh, okay. Like you know, we may do like some hill work or something along those lines afterwards to really like to make sure we're getting the full effect because during the strength phase, I don't care if they're tired. You yeah. know, if they're tired, that's good. That's fine. They should be. Yeah. In the specific phase, you can be tired too. But in the peak phase, that's when we want to go, okay, we're used to having a lot of volume on us and we can we can build and we can like literally just go kick butt. Mm-hmm. Um, so that kind of gives you an idea of that. You can look at that. You can base it off of you, the way that you want to. You can do whatever you want to there. And, and you know, take what I have, um, you know, fine tune it for what best fits your team. And mm-hmm. if you have a lot of kids that don't run over the summertime, then you might need to go a little bit longer um, with the one and ones and stuff like that instead of just jumping right into the tempo phase or whatever the case there. Because right. um, you can extend those, you know, you can have six weeks of easy mileage and then start the one and ones. And that's okay. Mm-hmm. You're, you're, whatever it takes to make your team successful there. Mm-hmm. So that kind of gives you a, uh, let's see if I can stop sharing here. I don't know. I'm not real sure how to do that whole thing, but I think you're back. Okay, cool. Yeah, so that kind of gives you an idea, a visual for those people that are watching it, for the people that are listening. Hopefully that, you know, I described it well enough for y'all that you can really, you know, take a grasp of that or even, you know, just go check it out on YouTube and just take pictures or whatever you want to do, man. Like, you mm-hmm. know, that's this is for people to help them and, and to allow them to grow. And that's what I, that's what I really want to see is just for people to take something that I have and go, Hey, well, pick up the phone and call me, you know, and say, Hey, well, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? You know, this or that kind mm-hmm. of thing. And we can really like, then we could talk, you know, I can have a conversation with them and say, Oh, what do you do? Because if I'm telling you, if somebody, I, I say this in there in the conclusion, if, if you, if, if somebody calls me and says, Hey, um, you know, can you help me out with workouts or my program or whatever the case is, I'm going to ask you first, what do you do? Mm-hmm. You know, I have a really good buddy of mine I talked about earlier from Irving Nimitz. Um, you know, he called me. He said, hey, would you sit down and have coffee with me so we could talk about your training program and your philosophy and how you do it? And I was like, yeah, sure, man, absolutely. I said, bring your stuff too. And he was like, what? So we sit down. <laughs> yeah, he was like confused. Like he was like, I didn't even know what uh-huh. I did. Yeah. And so we sat down and he was like, so what do you do? I was like, no, 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 no. That's not Tell me what you do. I was yeah. like. Tell me what you're doing first, and then we'll talk about it. You know, and I'll tell you what my point of view is, and then I want to see like what you what you're doing may not be wrong. You may just mm-hmm. be missing small key pieces. And a lot of people, a lot of times, like look at it and they go, "Oh crap, I'm missing." Oh, I, I, we don't do a base phase. We just go run. We just have our kids show up and we start running. Like we're missing yeah. out. We're missing out eight weeks of training or six weeks of training. So mm-hmm. when you look at that, I go, "Yeah." Like that's, that's where you're missing. That's all you're missing. Just add that and you're going to be fine. You know? Mm -hmm. And, um, like I said, at the beginning, there's no magic pill. There's no magic workout. There's no special 24 by 400. That's going to make you a state champion. You know, um, one of my buddies, you know, he, he did that workout before. And, uh, (laughs) it's funny. He did an interview and he told somebody, he goes, yeah, I ran 24 by 400. That's why I I won a state title, you know? And then everybody's trying to do 24 by 400 to win a state title. And he's, He's like, yeah. no, like I worked, I did everything before that to prepare myself for this. So, so that you could do that workout exactly. and actually get benefit from it. Yeah, man, I saw that, uh, I saw a, uh, I think it was a weekly workout plan that Jim Ryan did. Dude, that he, guy was a monster though. It was insane stuff. Like, and like, we look at it now and we're like, uh, that was probably hurting him, not helping him. Like yeah. the amount and volume, I mean, he was doing like. Uh, somebody tallied up the amount of time because it was something like uh, 400s at a certain pace and then he was starting them every every other minute on the minute or whatever and like yeah. they added up the time and it was like this workout took him three hours like yeah. <laughs> something crazy like that and it's like yeah. uh, okay like this yeah. is this is not good super super high intensity stuff too it was like he was running yeah. 400s at like 58 60 seconds like yeah you know and with a minute rest like over that amount of time like it's just it's crazy man but like it just shows you like it doesn't like that's different than what Prefontaine was doing, you know, and Prefontaine was 
American record holder in the 5K and the 10K and all that stuff. So, um, or the, the three mile and the six mile or whatever they call it, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, but, you know, and that's, it just shows you like there's no magic pill. There's no special thing that's going to make you great. You just take what everybody gives you, make your smorgasbord and just go, okay, like this is what, this is what we're going to do. This is what I, I feel like is going to be best for my team. Um, because it may be different from Frisco Reedy to what was best at commerce. Because I'm telling you, when I got to commerce, like they had not run, they had no confidence. They didn't, they, they the kids didn't know, you know, what to do. And then in less than six months, they were like, all right, coach, like, let's do this thing. Like I'm, I'm mm-hmm. going to run fast. You know, I had girls running 17 in the 17s, you know, that were 19 minute girls. I had girls running sub 220 that were 240 girls. I had guys running sub 150 that were 150 something, 155 guys, you know, mm-hmm. or people like I had a, a, a guy that went to Alabama. He'd run 152, 153, like consistently. And he just was like, I just don't coach. I don't have the drive for it anymore. And he runs 148 in his, my first all American that I've ever had, you know? And yeah, you know, but it's just the consistency and the buy-in and getting them to believe in themselves as a coach, that's what I would challenge you to do. Like more than researching a workout program or anything along those lines. And that's why I started in the, in the beginning with, Hey, being present, knowing the why, you know, being a year round runner and then never stop learning. That's cause that's the important stuff, you mm-hmm. know, because you can go read any book and find a workout planning and it will work. Like somebody, work. eventually somebody will be good enough to, mm-hmm. and it'll work, you know? And that's what, you know, people, the coach from University of Texas, when I was, uh, you know, working with Martin, because he's that's where he's going. He, you know, he went from literally zero offers to going to University of Texas. He that's where he wanted to go. He he wanted to go there, and when the coach finally called, he was like, "Yep, sign me up. Where, when do I sign?" You know, kind of thing. You know, mm-hmm. but the coach called me and he was like, "What are you doing with this kid? Like, where did like he was a fifteen forty kid a year ago, and he just ran fourteen forty something? Like, what are you doing? He ran mm-hmm. twenty seconds faster a mile." And I'm like, coach, I'm doing the same thing you're doing. And he was like, what? Like, I don't get it. And I was like, we're doing the same thing you're doing. I'm just making it where he believes in himself and where he's not getting injured. Mm-hmm. Like, because he was doing like 60 to, 60 to 70 miles a week, running himself from the ground every day, running his easy mm-hmm. runs at six minute pace. And then I was like, all right, hey, all your easy runs now are seven minute pace. I can't do that. I said, like, all right, then you won't, I won't coach you then. Mm-hmm. fine fine you know and then he started clicking and then he like started running fast i mean he's a 442 miler and he ran 420 you know 418 or something something like that somewhere around there yeah you know i oh, was yeah. like dude you see like your your capabilities are there you just have to recover when it's time to recover and work hard when it's time to work hard and if you do those things then your body will let you push past what you think you can do you know and that's with both of us so we look at it a lot and we go well do, can I can I do this? And you're like, probably not, but I'm gonna try. I'm gonna die trying. You know, <laughs> like with us now, like we're like we look at it and we go, man, we're running five mile tempo runs at five flat pace and like killing it. And now we're like, can I run one mile at five flat? Like, Let's go for it. Let's go for it. Like you know, like I did an 800 meter time trial the other day with two of my buddies. I haven't run an 800 in over 10 years. Like an 800 meter time trial in 10 years. And 10 years ago, I ran like 158. Okay. Did you beat Usain Bolt's uh, recent 800? I ran 212. Oh, then you beat him. He went 240. <laughs> yeah, dude, it was like so bad. But I was like, I hadn't been training that much. And I was like, you know what? Like, screw it. Let's go for it. I'll, try, I'll try to come to it 60. I haven't ran 60 flat in months, but I'll do it, you know? <laughs> so we did it, and I came through it like 212. And I was just like laying on the ground. And I was like, this is not fun. This is not as fun as it used to be. <laughs> You know, I could not train in high school and go run 205. You know, I ran like 20 miles a week in high school and 205, 204, 203. And like, yeah. and now I'm like, Mm-mm, no way. It's different. So, man. Yeah. I'm yeah. running more mileage now than I did in high school. And I'm running about 30 to 35 miles a week right now. And yeah. there's no way. I went 155 in high school. There's no way yeah. I could do that right now. Yeah, like, exactly. Exactly. And like. I had no idea what I was doing as far as training goes. Like I was just, yeah, my, whatever my coach told me to do, I'm like, all right, I'll do that. Like exactly, but man. I was always like, all right, coach, everybody else is done. Give me another one. Yeah, let's do seven. And then I do that. Give me another one. Like, and then he'd be like, okay, good. You did three extra reps. 
yeah, go home. <laughs> Cut it. You're done. <laughs> I'm like, but I can do more. Good. We'll do more, you know, we'll do more in two days. Yeah. Take take tomorrow easy. We'll do. And like, he was really good about holding me back from putting yeah. myself in a position where I would, you know, where I, I probably would have hurt myself because I was so hungry for it. Yeah. But, and that's how Martin was. He, he, he was a kid that, you know, really just wanted more. Wanted, Coach, I want to be best. I want to be the best person out there. I want to be the best. I want to be the best. I have to do more than it. Like, no, no, you don't. You just have to be smarter, you know? And so hopefully like through us talking about this and like seeing like the different training program that I may bring that maybe a coach doesn't, or, Hey, if you do Pavo, that kind of, I still do PPMs. You know, I, we do I like doing PPMs. I like doing SIs that the Pavo coaches will know exactly what I'm talking about. You mm-hmm. know, especially during this the the specific phase, like we might do a PPM and just race shock somebody. So PPM is basically like a tempo run, a threshold run. Um, and then SI's is slow intervals. It's uh, 400s at your VO2 max with 400 like equal jog rest recovery, big aerobic workouts. Okay, mm-hmm. um, you know I do some of those things because I like it. You know I like the I like the mindset of it. I like the hey we're pushing a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, I hope these other coaches look at it and they go, yeah, I like that. I'm going to take this from him. I'm going to take this from them. And then we can all, like, come together and literally just grow the sport of cross country and track and field, like the distance running Mm -hmm. stuff. Because it's so easy. Like, I I told somebody the other day, they're like, you're going back to high school coaching? I was like, yeah, college coaching wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to (laughs) be. For real. I'm honest. I'm I'm honest. I mean, it's not – it wasn't, like, too easy, right? But – yeah. I mean, like, it's nothing different than how high school coaching – and high school coaching is cake. Like, mm-hmm. you could pretty – if you know what you're doing, you could go somewhere and in three years have a program, like, that's really, really good. If you know what you're doing, you buy into those kids, they'll buy into you, and, like, you can have a really good program really fast. And that's, like, when I was doing the interview, our athletic director asked me, he said, so how do you plan on having continued success? And I said, by developing everybody – but developing the young into – the great ones. And then just year after year, having more and more people join. Mm-hmm. And he was like, well, what if you don't have a Colleen? Like, cause Colleen Stegman just graduated from Frisco Reedy. Um, you know, she's a Gatorade athlete of the year, 17 minute 5k girl in high school, sub five minute miler. Like she was yeah. really, really fast, you know? Um, and I said, coach for distance running, you don't have to have one person cross country. We have to have five. And he yeah. was like, I said, I can have five average girls and win a state title then have one fast girl. And he was like, okay. You know, and then he's like, all right, you're for real now. You know, and like, yeah. Like, and little does he know you're going to develop seven Colleen's. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I hope so. That's the plan, man. If so, we're going yeah. to index in and we're going to win the sucker. But I mean, we have the numbers to do it. I've got 2,000 kids in my school. Um, you know, but, and then kind of the last thing that I want to touch on this, I didn't even put in there, but I had the coach from Irving Nimitz. I sent him this and he sent me some reef, you know, some rebound back. He said, he goes, you talk about this in your practice, but you don't talk about this in your paper. And I was like, okay. It, so on my team, I have a lot of dual sport athletes. Mm-hmm. Right? I think we talked about this in the last podcast a little bit, but mm-hmm. it's I've had a lot more time to think about it now, you know. And he said, so because right now my my soccer girls come, they run four days a week. They run Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then Saturday, and then Tuesdays and Thursdays they don't even come to cross country. They do their own. They do soccer stuff. Mm-hmm. so but for me i'm like i know you're going to get good quality work at soccer practice so i'd much rather you not overdo it and be ready to go and i think that's something that especially high school coaches have to understand is that just because you're not seeing a kid every single day doesn't mean they're not getting something out of what they're doing and so yeah. i've seen like last year they had like 20 girls this year i've almost got 20 girls that play soccer and run cross country hmm. you know we're gonna have 40 or plus you know i've got 37 on my roster i think right now and i've got some that haven't wow. even showed up yet mm-hmm. so but it's because i embrace that hey these girls are running well they're doing great they're doing these things that they need to do you know and they have less reasons for injury because they're multi-dimensional right mm-hmm. yep. if you think about a soccer player what plane do they play in you know, they're, la- they're, you know, they're yeah. everywhere. So yeah. if I have an athlete that a distance runner is just running one plane all the time, mm-hmm. they're going to be more susceptible to an injury versus, or a basketball player, they're a lateral plane, you know, and then they're sprint and then that kind of stuff. So they're going to be mm-hmm. a lot better off than 
maybe a single dimensional athlete that just, oh, I'm just going to yeah. focus on cross country. So yep. like, they're going to be more athletic. Exactly. Which should make them more, a little more resilient. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, think, I, it, you know, that's kind of like what I'd like to touch on a little bit at the very end. It's just like coaches, if you have, you know, male or female athletes that do multiple sports, I've got swimmers, I've got people that do fencing. I've got kids that are run or play basketball that, run or uh, not run that yeah, obviously run track and cross country, but then like play soccer, those kind of things, like embrace it, let them do what they want to do. They're young. They're they're They can handle it. And if you yeah. see them three days a week, that's more than nothing or you're mm-hmm. running kids off and, and not having them, you know, be a, yeah. in your program. I'd much rather have 50 kids that do that. You know, 30 of them do two sports than to have 20 kids that just do one sport and missing out mm-hmm. on maybe a kid that has an opportunity to do, go help us win a state title, you know, cause I, I have a girl that's a basketball player and she's one of my, she's going to be one of my top girls, you know, mm-hmm. three of the freshman girls that I have are soccer players, you know, coach, I've got soccer camp this week. Okay, go have fun. Don't worry about running. Enjoy it. What? Mm-hmm. Really? Why? Like, like, what the heck? You know, I'm like, yeah. I'll see you when you get back. And then they get mm-hmm. back and she's been running and jumping and the, they ran three miles at soccer camp and then so- mm-hmm. played soccer all day. I'm yep. like, you're there. You're, you're fine. You're going to be good. You know? Yeah. So it's just, um, I guess, the, putting the ego aside and going, hey, they're, they're going to be good. They're going to help my program and, uh, you know, go from there. So, Yeah, and in, in two years' time, maybe when they get to their junior year, they're like, you know what? I think I'm better at running than I am at soccer. Uh, yeah. Maybe it's time to focus on this. Yeah. And then perfect. Then they're not burned out. They're not yeah. trained into the ground. They're fresh and they're hungry. And, and then you can say, okay, well, let's do that then. Yeah. Or, you know what, coach? I want to keep playing soccer. All right, cool. Yeah, I mean, there's, I, I knew multiple national champions and, and state champions that, hey, I played soccer in high school, coach. You know, if mm-hmm. you go to the Valley or like, you know, South Texas or stuff like that, like all those kids play soccer. And then, I mean, when I was at Melissa, we had San Elzario. Half their team was on the soccer team and then even practice during track season. You know, they just go and they just show up to the meets and go run 420 or 430, 450. You know, I'm like, yeah, gosh, dang, those kids, but they just play soccer nonstop. So yeah, they're running three, four miles in a game. Yeah. Like it's not, it's not that they're not conditioned. It's just, it's yeah. different. It's a little different, but they're not, it's not zero. It's not nothing. It's yeah. And they won five mm-hmm. straight state titles, mm-hmm. you know, so you look at it and you go, they're obviously doing something right. So like, <laughs> heck, yeah. let's go, you know, like they're not, I, sure. I know the coach, the coach is a great coach, you know, and he's not doing anything special. He's like, Hey, we'll just run them hard in the hard days and let them play soccer. Like, so sounds it, good. Yeah. Heck yeah. For me, I'm like, yeah, I'm sure. Whatever you're going to do. So keep it up. Yeah. <laughs> help, help us win. So that's awesome. Sweet. Well, dude, how can people get in touch with you? And, and yeah. when this thing is completed, like, uh, uh, obviously like, let me know and I'll, I'll put it on blast, but sure. uh, like, thank you for, you know, letting me take a look at it. I've, it's like you said, it's always good to continue learning. And, um, I've been reading a little bit of Jack Daniels lately. I've been reading this other book by Jay Johnson, like to have this, like it's, it's always good to like, it keeps my perspective fresh and, um, it makes me like question like, okay, what else, what could I be doing differently? Where are, where are gaps in my program? What do I need to bolster? What do I need to fix? What do I need to switch yeah. up? And I get I get stuck in in tending to do the same things over and over again. Like yeah. my Tuesdays are this kind of workout. My Fridays are this kind of workout. And it's good to see like, oh, okay, like if I look at it, you know, on this three week cycle, how much better would things be? Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. Um, and you, and I look yeah. at it like, if you look at like the phases, it didn't, it, it just says tempo. It doesn't say it's like three mile tempo this week, four mile tempo this week. It's it. So it's up to you. Like it can be right. like, Hey, I'm going to do a two by two mile, or I want to do a five mile or six mile or whatever the case is. Or if you have kids varying different levels, you can do a two mile with one of them and four mile with the other one. So mm-hmm. it's very, very open. And, and uh, you know, it, it, you can do whatever you want. It's open book, you know? Yep. So and that's why I'm, I'm putting it out and giving it to people and, and, and uh, those kind of things there. Um, but, you know, if people want to get in contact with me, they can email me, um, scribner.luke at yahoo.com. Um, and it's S-C-R-I-B-N-E-R. That's how you spell Scribner. Um, so just email me, shoot me a, an email and just be like, hey, man, let's talk. Or, hey, what do you think about this? Or, 
hey, can you send me that document? Like, I, I'll send it to him, no problem. I'm, I'm not, you know, I'll give it to everybody. Um, yeah. You know, and then you made it be, for everybody, right? Exactly, so. exactly, man. And just get it out to people and and let them listen to it and, and let them see it and, and uh, you know, just tell me what they think. You know, I mean, obviously, like. It may be different than what you do. It may be different than what your coach does. It may be different what your college coach did. Whatever the case is, like we're all a little bit different. Um, mm-hmm. So that's just how I do it, and I just put a little bit of reason behind it, and and uh, a lot of effort, you know, on my part. And it's you know not effort into the, going into the training, but effort into the kids. Mm-hmm. Uh, really, really just allowing them to know that hey, coach, like I care about you. I want you to be successful, and I'm going to be here for you. Like. Even if you run like crap, even if you feel like crap, that's okay, you know, mm-hmm. uh, because not every day is going to be perfect, you know, and I, I'm, I'm a full testament to that. I tell my kids all the time, like I was weak. I was a weak runner. I used to quit on workouts. I used to do all this stuff. And until like I finally started believing in myself, you know, mm-hmm. I never really had that coach that was like, oh, hey, you can do it. Like you can, you know, you can push through this until I got to college. You know, I started running at Tarleton and I had some college coaches that were really had a a big impact on me and they were like hey like you could push me in the back a little bit like keep going keep going yep. don't be mm-hmm. weak you know and i'm like oh okay well and then i started getting way way better really fast you know mm-hmm. and so when you have that belief in yourself and 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 the kids have that belief like that that they believe in that you believe in them they will they will do everything. things they will do things that you never thought were possible and they never thought were possible you know and that's For what sure. i tell people all the time that's why i coach I coach to to see kids do things that they never thought were possible. You know, I don't coach to win state championships. I don't coach to win regional championships. I don't coach to have a first place athlete. I coach to have people to do things they never thought were possible. And if we get dead last and we're doing things that are over the top, like that's fine with me, man. You know, yeah. but I, I, I want to see that success like happen long after I'm gone. And mm-hmm. uh you know, that's, that's what really happens. Or when a coach, you know, a kid calls me, like I, I have a kid that I used to coach that, uh, what's the uh, McKinney Boyd coach, uh, Keith Pierce, you know, Dallas marathon champion, you know, he called me and I was doing a private coach and he said, Hey, I got this girl, eighth grade girl. She's pretty good. You know, I wanted you to kind of get her better for next year. Can, can she work out with you? Absolutely, man. And, you know, her mm-hmm. mom called me the other day and she was like, hey, I want to thank you so much. Like you gave her so much confidence in herself and her abilities to run fast. And like now she's doing really, really good work for her coach now. And I'm like, mm-hmm. that's what I'm here for. You know, mm-hmm. I, I, didn't, I wasn't there to see her run sub six as an eighth grader. Like, you know, I wanted to see her be able to, to do good stuff long term with her, even her coach. Now, even when we're going to see them at, at meets and stuff like that, you know, um, yep. that's that's why we do it. You know, why we do what we do. So. I know the same way with you and, uh, you know, hopefully all these coaches that hear this and watch this and listen or whatever the case is that, you know, they take a little bit of motivation and, and, uh, you know, just really know that, Hey, I'm, I can be, you can be successful too. You know, even mm-hmm. if you're the worst team in the district or whatever the case is, you can, you can keep pushing and you can get something out of these kids that nobody else has. To. So, yeah, you just, you got to invest and, and it'll happen. It can happen for sure. Yep. Invest and fate is the rest. <laughs> That's the truth. I like so, it. Yeah, man. Dude, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. This was so fun. I really enjoyed yeah, it. Man. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me out. For sure. All righty, y'all. Uh, if you have any questions for Luke, be sure to uh, email him. And as soon as this document is is ready to, to put on blast, be uh, be uh, sure to, to download it and read it and Start implementing as soon as you can. All right, y'all. Thanks for sure. Thanks for watching and listening. And stay tuned for next week's episode all about peaking. What is it? Is it a thing? Et cetera. Adios.